This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. fellow investigators and welcome to our video podcast into the darkness where my friends and i will be playing world war cthulhu rpg i'm your host tom Rayleigh. we continue with world war cthulhu london it was written by matthew sanderson and scott dorward uh this scenario is entitled midnight sunrise our keeper of arcane lore is matthew sanderson and this is episode six our recap will be given by alex sun as his character edgar Angrave. Uh, but before we begin, we have a new patron. Uh, Opossumus J has pledged $5 a month to our club. Thank you so much, Opossumus J. So without any further delays, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Alex? This is Private Investigator Edgar Andrave checking in. A lot has happened within the past 24 hours. Yesterday evening, our group decided to lay a trap at the Riverside Hotel, expecting that living fire to strike there. What actually happened was similar to the attack on Teresa's house, where two cultist lackeys, armed with flare guns and another of those strange marbles, uh, marble stones, showed up. Mr. Leland killed one of them with uh, my revolver, and Davidge managed to restrain the other one for interrogation with his cane. It could have been messier, all things considered. The cult is under the belief that what they are doing is going to save them, which is finding a way to escape Earth and live among the stars. They are transforming people into what they call fire vampires, which are these small living balls of fire that defy all natural order. After the interrogation, I did what I had to do, to disable the cultist's ability to vocally recite incantations so that there was no way he could summon more of those monsters. And when we save the day, that cultist is going to thank me, because it's better to have a broken jaw than to die for a delusion. Today, we met with N to prepare our infiltration of Aurora Williams' estate by fixing up the truck that the lackeys left and created and creating incriminating documents that will allow N to operate with full power and jurisdiction when we do end up engaging the Williams Shipping Company warehouse later tonight. Now we are going to get ready to head out. God help us. Well, let's see if he's ready to answer some answer some prayers. <clears throat> so, how do you want to approach the where uh, the I was going to the warehouse then for a minute? Uh, how do you want to approach the Williams residence? So, are you going in the van or are you going uh, turning up at the front doorstep? I believe we were given fake documents that will allow us just to get in. So. Yes, we've got search warrants. I think if we show up in the van, we'll be tipping our hand. Right, that's for later tonight. Okay, so you're saving the van for tonight. A room. Right. Uh, right. Can we all fit in your private car, Green? Oh, yes. We can get uh, fairly close uh, if we want to get there and then uh, we don't want to rely on them. Don't want to rely on taxis in case we need to beat a hasty retreat. Indeed. I'll put the oh. top down so that we can just hop in if we need to. No, hold on a minute. Now, regarding the van, or thinking for later, one of the things that Fotheringay can mention to you is that he's quite happy to take the, to take the van round to Teresa's house. And given it's not a massive distance away from Aurora Williams's house, once you've finished up there, you can use Teresa's house as kind of a rendezvous point, and Ooh. then from there, work out what you're going to need to do to either get paid, uh, to get any search warrants or then proceed to the warehouse you can you can kind of play it by ear from there well then. so right, am i just going to go in with my deformed face or are we letting me in the back door 
Uh, I think, um, you know, uh, Green and I will be the forward team and you and Ungrave will be brought in, you know, we'll just sort of wave you in as uh, participants of the search. They won't. The fact that you've been injured is hardly disqualifying to your being able to look through this uh, home for proof of criminal activity. Um, I suppose, Angrave, that you'll be the one to uh, plant the document in question? Yes. To discover the object in question, I mean? Yes. Are, are we redressed as police, or are we just going in as we are? I'm I'm going to use my real name. I'm a solicitor. I've been hired. We're we we are duly appointed by the uh, crown to investigate this woman for po potentially treasonous activity. Very good. Uh, That's be on your lookout. They're all fanatics. Quite no. We we can anticipate n n no proper cooperation from people who believe that the apocalypse is nigh. Um, and likewise, we shouldn't be afraid once we've gotten entry of we're protecting ourselves proactively, let's say. Uh, we don't want you know, for that shifty-eyed butler to get us with a paper knife since he thinks there'll be no uh, punishment given the world's about to go up in flames. Or a flare gun. Or a flare They're gun. They're big fans of those. Probably not in her home. Uh, in addition to planting, discovering the evidence, uh, we're also looking for anything like, for example, the book that she found that has the annotations that founded this. Do we have any other desired discoveries? Anything else we're hoping to find? And do we anticipate that she'll be at the house? I rather expect she'll be at the warehouse getting things ready, burning sage or whatever they do. I imagine most cult leaders, though, like to come in spectacularly just before the grand ritual. She might be at home. She might be primping for to meet She'd her god, primping, after all. Yes. She could be bathing in virgin blood, for all we know. So I suppose we're looking for anything as well that might be incriminating as to some sort of um, illegal activity. One thing that would be a bonus is getting the typewriter. Hmm. Right. Well, the Those very least written, fairly which portable. was... Yeah. Well, yeah, yes. The, 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 we have the, the signed document and the handwritten note. I thought that the plan was to typewrite something on the site. That's yes. the final bit of evidence. Now, how noisy is the typewriter? Like, you could probably hear it a couple of rooms it's away. It's pretty yeah. loud. So, oh, although a house of her quality, you know, the doors are quite sound, and we can make all the noise we want ourselves as we search. Very well. Uh, I don't Hopefully they we'll... don't have it. A... Oh, go ahead. I'm not particularly concerned about fooling the staff, after all. It's the authorities that we have to wave these papers in front of after the there's, staff know what they're up to. That's something that our GM actually mentioned, and David, you would be well aware of it. Um, typewriters use a ribbon that feeds from one spool to another spool, and every time you hit it, it leaves that letter in the ribbon. So you could literally read a letter by unspooling the ribbon and reading the words. Although, generally speaking, also you rewind the ribbon and use it multiple times. There's quite a bit of carbon on those tapes. You so could, yes, yeah. But we we definitely want it to be from her typewriter because there are quite idiosyncratic ups and downs. Yeah, not all from the keystrokes. The same. So. Assuming that they don't give us more than a few minutes of fuss, uh, we want a decent amount of time to try to uh, find her secret lockbox full of occult business. But we also want to be off uh, to the warehouse well before sunset so that we're in position uh, while the 
things are hidden within. So let's say we spend 40 minutes searching and then Angrave discovers the proof positive and we storm out, return to Teresa and Davidge's street and switch vehicles. Unless, of course, something unexpected. I'm uh, well aware of what uh, the tome should look like. So it should be very similar to the one that we already have. Right. And those annotations, while you'll have little time to study them, they might provide a key. Mm, indeed. Right then. Sounds like. Tally ho. Sounds like all your preparations are in place. So, unless anyone's got any last minute you want to jump in, we can cut to the front door of Teresa's house. Let's just remind ourselves who was armed and how. I know that Angrave has a revolver, is it? Yes, that's correct. And Davidge has his stick. Uh, and I have this sheaf of official looking papers. <laughs> and I have my rage. <laughs> All right, then. And your hideous countenance. <laughs> yep. Strike fear into their hearts, Leland. <laughs> Who are you calling hideous? <laughs> right. A uh, sharp, to... Is it a, is a knocker? It is, yes. I shall knock firmly thrice. Okay. There's a dang, dang, dang. Few moments pass, and then the same little slit opens that you'd seen previously, and might be the same voice. It's a bit hard to tell with the the muffled of uh, muffling of only a small, narrow gap. I got a one eye poking out and look it all looking very disapprovingly down at you. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Milton Spofford Harris, representing Dunbar and Associates. Um, I have here an official uh, warrant to search this premises on behalf of the Crown. I'll hold it up briefly for his perusal. There's a seal on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I insist you open it forthwith. Uh, but he kind of gestures for you to yeah, put it through the slots. So you put it through. I put it through without letting go of the back of it. Okay, he's not going to try and snatch it out of your hand. He just wants to. Evidently, it seems that he is quite short sighted, so he just wants to get Ooh. in close and have a look at it, which maybe uh, also helps to assuage any fears you might have had of him recognizing you from last Ooh. time. So he has a look at it, and you hear a kind of, huh, well, normally police turn up with warrants like this. You say you're a lawyer. Yes, that's right. I have uh, some detectives from the force with me as well. It should only take 20, 20, 30 minutes tops, I expect. Um, and we'll probably be able to clear your mistress's name. But, you know, what with the war footing and all, things happen expeditiously at times. He, he breathes in and you can you can hear the reluctance in his in his breath. You better come in then. She's not going to be very happy. Uh, is the mistress at home then? I should like to have a word with him. Yes, she is. Uh, very good. Thank you for your assistance. He, he um, pushes the letter back, closes the slot, and then there's a big thunk as the lock and a bar gets pulled back from the inside and the door doesn't ominously creak open. It just glides open like a well-oiled, well-maintained uh, door to a very expensive property like it is. Oh. Um, all right, chaps. Here we go. Um uh, uh, sir, what's your name to the servant the butler? Uh, Mr. Brown, Miles Brown. Mr. Brown, um, thank you for not making this any more difficult than it has to be. Uh, if, uh, which, uh, where will I find, uh, Miss Williams? Well, I'll go and call her for you. Um, if you'd like to step forward into the, uh, into the drawing room, and uh, he gestures to a door on, um, on your right. Uh, you can okay. see there's a staircase in front of you. There's an, a, another corridor that goes down past that, presumably deeper into the building. Uh, there's also another larger set of double doors to the left. 
that opens up into what looks like probably a lounge. It's definitely a larger room than the room he's directing you to. But yeah, there's... Um, well, actually, give me a listen roll before I com complete that st statement. So every everyone can try this. Oh, while I hear all, I rolled a two. <laughs> that sounds pretty definitive. I got a hard. Okay. My ears are plugged with melted flesh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get anything. <laughs> what? Right, so yeah, Le Leland and Edgar are uh, otherwise obliv not quite oblivious, but uh, distracted, maybe. Uh, Davidge and Melvin, then, you would expect in a house like this, there would obviously be a number of servants. So there would be a good degree of noise of people moving around, that there would be activity taking place over most of the house. And properties like that, they're nice and big, they're spacious, they would echo. You hear little bits of movement, implying that there's only probably a handful of people here. Um, with Melvin getting such a such a good role, you think there's probably no more than half a dozen people here, probably. But there's very unlikely to be any more than that. Seven and, at the absolute tops. And we know that she basically brought everyone from the her firm into the house as staff, more or less, so two dozen people easily to there maintain a house. There would, have, there would have been closer to a dozen earlier. Mm. Uh, so this is going back before she became very reclusive and also before you started uh, killing folks at Teresa's house and the, uh, the hotel. <laughs> or rather, uh, Edgar and Leland started killing people, I should say. Uh, when are we? Yeah, this... Oh, oh yeah, cool. people people got a hand in all over the place. But, yeah, as you've whittled down the, the numbers of her in, a, her in a circle, you don't think there's that many left here. I say half a dozen plus her, you think, is probably what's all that's left. And the sounds that you hear echoing around the house of people moving around, working, etc., would definitely would corroborate that assumption. Wondering if we should be a little intimidating and just say, all right, boys, start, start searching, you know, <laughs> Uh, you're, you're, I'll, I'll wait where, where uh, I was asked to by Mr. Brown because I'll be, I guess, talking to the lady of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of you should probably scatter and find her private library. Let's take a bathroom break. Well, uh, time's wasting. We have to start the search. Yeah, I'm going to just be like, oh, yeah, I really have to pee and then walk around <laughs> and just go somewhere else. I'm just yep. going to start searching. Yeah, I'm going to head upstairs. Brown at that point is kind of uh, sort of blusters a bit and says, "Sorry, I'm, I'm, if you don't mind, I'll go and get the lady of the house. And if you'd like to just wait in here for a minute, what?" I, I'll speak with Miss Williams. We have uh, little time. Uh, again, we are authorized to look through the place. Don't uh, don't tally, Terry. He he just starts blustering and then frantically uh, trots off. To try to try and find where his mistress is. So the the th the rest of you are you just going like bulling a bull in a china shop and just starting to uh, storming around the house? Yeah, I'm gonna make myself um, scarce. The way houses are laid out, I can sort of guess where the library study might be. I don't need Probably, to search yeah. the dining room. <laughs> yeah, it's. The, the library study would almost certainly be upstairs. Ah. Uh, there might there might be a larger library, more like a public function room down a library down here on the ground floor, uh, probably connecting near to the lounge or the um, or the dining room in that kind of area of the house, and then that would in turn lead into the kitchens and then the exterior courtyard at the back. But otherwise, yep, yeah, study would probably be upstairs. Uh, any other offices that are up there, and also then bedrooms and servants' quarters would probably be up in the attic. So, whereabouts are people? Uh, if you're dividing and conquering, where are people heading? Going up. Okay, so Edgar's heading up. I'll do a quick walk around down here just to get the layout of the rooms. Okay, so you're saying downstairs. Yeah. Leland? I'll go for the basement. Okay. 
unusual t- unusual one, but valid. And Melvin? Uh, I'm, uh, you know, as the face, going to wait as asked for the lady of the house. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're actually being the polite one. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll do Leland first then, because yours is probably going to be the quickest one to get to. Uh, the, the normal place that you would find the entrance down to the basement would be either on, on a panel door by the stairs, or maybe like in the kitchen that then also would go down the kind of underneath the staircase. So in either case, you find it fairly easily. We'll say it's a side door uh, going off the stairs and then heading down. Um, there is a drawstring light that when you uh, when you pull it, it refreshingly comes on. So there is there is light down in the basement. And the basement mostly consists of storage and a very large and relatively well stocked wine cellar. So yeah, there's plenty of plenty of stuff down there. Um, there's a, the signs that people do come down here relatively regularly. I'll say this is a lot of where the storage uh, is taking place rather than being out on display or cluttering the upstairs. But nothing that really strikes you as being odd on face value. Um, you can give me a spot hidden roll, though, to see if you notice anything else that might be particularly relevant. Oh, five. I was going to say, great poker face there. But... Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> No, in which case, the only thing that really strikes you as being slightly out of the ordinary um, is there is an open box on a shelf that's in the, the equivalent of a larder that's down here. And it is completely full of very large, well, not large, but long um, candles, just more than you would expect even a household like this to have. So it just strikes you as being odd that they're, they're there. And the fact Typical that it's still open... Is... Yeah, and also the connection with fire. Maybe there's something that uh, something that suddenly bells start ringing, ringing there. Right, uh, we'll go to Edgar next as you are heading upstairs. Yeah, I'm, my main goal is to really find a study or somewhere that uh, Aurora would have her typewriter. That's my main goal, and if I can okay. do it stealthily, the better. I was just about to ask if you want if you're going up there, then give me a stealth roll to see if you can move around without someone intercepting you. Because if you're just charging in like a bull in a china shop, you're gonna have opposition. All right, this is twenty stealth twenty. Let's let's go. I rolled a ninety one. <laughs> okay, you wouldn't, don't want to push it. What's the consequence on a push to fail? Ah, uh, you might encounter some more violent opposition. I'm putting the red flag to a ball here. <laughs> so far. I'm seeing the looks of horror on my fellow players' faces. <laughs> so no, I'm not going to push it. Okay, so you're just going with uh, though there will be you are going to be noticed, but it won't be yeah, violent opposition then. Okay, in which case, then you do round a corner and see a room with a door that's open, so you can see kind of a sliver of. Um, the contents of the room. It looks like a large, but you can see floor to ceiling bookcases and the edge of a desk. So it looks like that's the room that you're after. And just as you're making a beeline towards it, coming round the corner and stepping right into kind of up into your face with a kind of surprised look on her face is what seems to be a, a someone in a, almost like a maid's outfit, but more glorified. So she's probably the housekeeper, you'd think, rather than necessarily a maid per se. But she, yeah, she's a uh, lady, slightly, you know, got the the older side of forty, and looks like she's been the uh, the kind of person that looks like she's worked all her life. Uh, it's very much rugged uh, features, quite worn hands and the like. So very much a practical, hands-on kind of person, and so it's a little bit blustered and surprised. Oh, what? what who, who are you? What are you? What are you doing up here? Excuse this, me, this... ma'am. Official police business. I'm going to try and intimidate her. Okay, you can certainly try. All right. I got a 50, so that's better than stealth. It's better than you. This is more your wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> and I did get a 52, so I'll spend two luck. Okay. Um, she Best does... Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does kind of bless, again, step back a little bit and her eyes open wide. And, and as quivers. soon as she steps back, I'm just going to push past her. 
you can't go warrant lawyer downstairs at which point because she was going to ask where's your proof to back this up she hears the word lawyer and she starts toffling down the stairs so going very much away from you leaving you in what blatantly appears to be aurora's office all right i close the door and lock it okay the, <laughs> the key is in the lock so not a problem Nice. Um, you have a very nice, well-appointed office here. Like I said, it's surrounded on pretty much all four sides by floor-to-ceiling bookcases. There's no exterior window here, so it's completely encased in the in the middle of the building. Um, there's now, a big, big desk. I don't quite understand how like the ribbon works for the typewriter, but mm -hmm. could I just pocket it and take it? Yeah. And since that belongs to her, we could use another typewriter to, of a similar make and model to replicate it with that same. Yeah, you, you would need to get into some really kind of forensic detail to be able to match yeah. whether, if you got the same type of typewriter. Yeah. Um, as was mentioned, they all have kind of slight idiosyncrasies as to how they um how the keys hit the ribbon and then make mm -hmm. the impression on the um on the paper or transfer the ink from the ribbon onto the paper. But it would take a fair amount of time and an expert to be able to go, well, this was obviously the ribbon from her typewriter, but it wasn't made from uh, the keystrokes don't match. There would be a lot of forensic detail that has to go in there. But if you want okay. something that on surface value is kind of the smoking gun, it's going to be fairly easy to do it with just the ribbon. Okay, so if it's easy to do with the ribbon, I'm not going to risk typing it because typing it is going to... It takes Just too long for a make start. a shit ton of noise. Yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll pop the ribbon if that's fairly quick. And oh then... yeah, you you basically pull the two spools off either end. Yep. Yeah. You do notice that alongside uh, the typewriter on her desk, though, there are a couple of other books which are there. Yeah, I'll uh, just. Oh... Uh, do I got a bag with me? I probably have a uh, satchel. Yeah, you can have something uh, like a Ooh. like a Ooh. messenger bag by your side. It's, Not a problem. It's all going in. Yeah, there's there's one that looks to be effectively like a ledger, which looks to be like normal business transaction stuff, but then the other one looks uh, very much like a uh, like a journal as such. Um, it is open on one uh, one page spread. All right, which and it's can, the most recent read. entry. Yeah, you can read that without any difficulty. I think I will. Let's see what we have here. Knight dash F. S E selfies maybe, a one. 9 sunday 10 p.m c probably for uh what was his name Ch Ch chamberlain mm -hmm. that uh surgeon 2 9 monday 10 25 p.m this is probably tracking the that um astrological uh, star in the sky because there is which yeah. you identified SE as southeast, and F would make sense with Fomalhaut, so that yeah, it's this is this is easy for a detective such as I. Uh, <laughs> so four nine, we have Dunbar at a ten fifteen, uh, denoted by D. Nothing on five nine on six nine. Uh, there's a W, most likely for uh, the person we saved. And then a, seven nine is a very ominous all at ten p.m., which probably means the entire world is gonna go up in flames. So optimistic there. Yeah. And then there's just uh, another note at the end that says C dash three dash D dash two dash W dash one dash all. So. Yep representing the number of days almost like a countdown three mm -hmm. days later from chamberlain equals dunbar two days after dunbar equals whittaker one day after whittaker equals all yeah this is not going to happen <laughs> there we go. Um, if you wanted to spend a minute or two you could flick through the journal and see if there's anything I think else I will. That, yeah. okay. the door is locked and everyone's distracted and it's a big heavy door so no no one is exactly going to just run in and uh, disturb you at this point so, yeah, you, you can have a look through. And there is one section that does stand out, mainly because of the, the writing at the bottom of the page that seems almost incomprehensible. But then the text above it definitely uh, definitely strikes, uh, well, this catches your eye. Let's have a look. That looks... All right, let's see. Huh, this journal entry. 
Now I know why these are called the forbidden arts. Not that they are evil, but that there is some knowledge that humanity should be forbidden from knowing, like the knowledge of its own destruction. I have seen the future. I have seen the world engulfed in flame until it is no more than a lifeless cinder hanging in the cold void of space. Everything I've ever known, everything I've ever loved, will all be consumed in fire. I gathered my friends around me once more to show them that the horror that was to come, so that we could search for a way to stop it, to avoid it. Together, we called to the herald of the true flame and begged him to spare this world. It was the hand of man that would burn this world, not him or his master. There was nothing he could do to stop it. However, he could save his followers by becoming as he in service to the true flame. We could be spirited away from this lifeless rock once it had been destroyed by man. The arts in the book would allow us to survive the apocalypse, but what life would it be to remain on a dead world? We accepted his offer. There would not be time to call him again until the sky had changed, so we had time to prepare. Summoning him, as the book states, could kill a number of us. Having thought about this for a good many nights, the answer finally came to me. Who better than those who betrayed me and left me as I am? They are going to die anyway in the inferno, so why not let their lives be spent saving us? By wrapping them in flame and subjecting them to a small part of the pain I have endured for years at their hands, I might also finally have some of the revenge I have desired for so long. And then there's this absolutely insane rambling at the end. Maybe at least a couple of words there that you've uh, been acquainted yeah. with so far. Yeah, Cthulhu, Fomalhalt... Mm -hmm. and then yep i don't that's... recognize this language <laughs> language now there's just a load of uh, loads of consonants and the occasional uh, apostrophe thrown together right uh, there is one other book actually i forgot to mention on the desk as well besides the ledger which just looks like regular business uh, accounts here um it's a small leather bound octavo volume that has a couple of straps that hold it in place um, it looks old. So now, does it look book. like the ancient uh, pyromancy book that uh, Davidge wanted? It, if you flick open the front page, it is. Yeah, I'm looking for the annotations. Uh, yeah, uh, there's tons, all, all written in red ink. So all this, right, I'm going to grab this, this the look. annotation annotated book for Davidge. Yeah, this looks like the book of all forbidden arts, the one that had the the extra notes that have been put in there. Okay. Now I am carrying so many valuable things to our cause. I just need to leave. I need to get out. Okay, so you're going to you're going to start heading out uh, back or back downstairs or yep. wherever to go to. Because of what you found there, everyone can do this for where you are in the building. Because this is something that you all may have noticed and uh, going to different parts. Um, you can give me your choice of idea or spot hidden. I'll take an idea. Might as well. Regular only. I got a regular. Are we all rolling for that? Yes, because you're you're admittedly while you're all going to different parts of the house, this might be something that you all either realize or notice. I got a spot hidden of thirteen and twelve is extreme, so I'll spend one point to make it extreme. Okay, well, hard would a bit hard's good. So if you want to save onto your one point of luck, you never know. You might you might need it. All right, I'll save it. And, <laughs> and Leland, I also got a hard spot hidden. Okay, in which case then, from all the different parts that each of you have gone into the house, as I said, we'll get to Davidge in a sec, and then say back to to Melvin. But rooms or corridors that you go down in the house you notice occasionally there are sections where there's just a blank piece of wall where it feels like something is missing and then you're thinking well what what's missing what would be if it's like a painting that's hung up there or a picture that's hung up it then kind of dawns on you uh particularly when edgar reads that last bit about how she's been left in this state that she's in there's no mirrors anywhere here. Ah. So maybe it seems like any mirrored surface or decorative mirror have all been taken uh, taken away. They Just remind her of 
of her own pain. Yeah. I did I did keep a a pocket mirror just to shock her if need be. You certainly did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at it. <laughs> right, so that was a, as you've got your smoking gun as it were from upstairs. Um and then David, you're downstairs, you're downstairs, you're doing a uh, skirt of the rooms down there. And I won't give you a, uh, any point with a listen roll. You're just going to, you're going to hear it if you're walking around downstairs. Uh, you do hear the butler's voice, uh, presumably coming from somewhere back near the kitchen. Uh, very flustered where he says, uh, uh, my, my lady, my lady, there's a, there's, there's some people here. There's a, there's not a lawyer and there's, there's some people with police documents. They say they're detectives and they, you, they, 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 they they've split up and they've started searching the house there what, what what what's going on they, 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 they want blah, blah, blah. and a very calm uh but force birth calm but authoritarian responses don't worry miles don't worry where are they i will go and see them now and depending do you want to be there to intercept her when she comes into view or where do you want to be? i would rather not i'll let her go past towards uh, Melvin. Okay. In which case, you hear two sets of foot, uh, footsteps going down the uh, down the hallway. Uh, you hear as you've gone past, as you're, you're there going past where you where you are, you can quite happily tuck yourself into the uh, into the dining room while they go past in the uh, the hallway out the corridor outside. Um, you hear her say to the butler. Uh, Bring them to the uh, bring them to the library, uh, not the library, the lounge. Yeah, and then the two sets of foot, uh, footsteps diverge, and Melvin hears someone coming towards uh, coming towards the door. The butler returns back in, uh, straightens his jacket, and says, "Yes, the uh, the lady of the house will uh, will see you now. She'll receive you in the in the lounge." Uh, thank you, Mister Brown. After you, uh, yeah, he directs. Uh, gestures for you to follow and uh, promptly looks around trying to work out where everyone else has gone and then just resorts to uh, yelling loudly um, if uh, our visitors would like to come downstairs to the uh, the lounge the lady of the house will uh, will see you now which Edgar catches this muffled kind of <laughs> from downstairs through the big thick heavy door uh, yes, Mr. Brown, again, um, we're trying to cover a lot of ground as quickly as possible, so I'll speak to the mistress and we'll let the lads get on with what they're doing. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. And I and... think what I will do is I will head in that direction, but I'm going to stay out in case I need to suddenly burst in and save the day. Okay, so you're, you're going to be close wow. by and ready to suddenly dive in if need be. Yeah. Okay, there are two ways into the lounge. Uh, so there's one that goes connecting into the into the dining room area, which is where you can be discreetly tucked away in that um, around the corner of the doorway there. And then there's the doorway that leads in from the main hallway, the one where the staircase goes up from the upstairs. Uh, the room is a large rectangular room, so you've got large high windows on the on what would be Melvin's left hand side which overlooks the front of the building and at the end of the room um, after having uh, cast your eyes over plenty of antique furniture here that's probably worth more than your year's salary uh, would get to the end of the room you see this rather beautiful uh, lady very elegantly dressed in a almost uh, very figure accentuating uh, dress almost kind of a ball, ball gown or a cocktail dress type thing uh, with long opera gloves that completely cover her hands and upper arms that then go underneath the, the sleeves of the dress. And she's got a white scarf that goes around covering most of her neck. Uh, very much a more, let's say, less bandage a bandage way of doing what Leland was doing, of hiding potentially all the scar, uh, scar tissue that's sort of all these burnt material that's under there. Um, she's got quite uh, striking red hair, and half of which kind of take uh, kind of covers one side of her face, and then it leaves just this one kind of piercing eye, 
looking at you, but otherwise this completely blank and emotionless expression. Uh, she stood right next to a roaring fireplace at the end of the room. You can give me a spot hidden roll. It's an overly warm September, as I recall. It is. So this 20... is an oppressively hot room. Yes, 29 is a regular success for Spot Hidden. I got a regular, but I could spend it down. Okay, so Leland's coming into the room as well, yeah? Yeah, that was my plan, yeah. I was going to go oh, with him. Bingo. Okay, so if you get a regular success, that is fine. Uh, how many points have you both lo both lost so far in sanity to five vampires? Oh, uh, I'm uh, astonishingly uh, neurologically intact. I missed the first night altogether. Mm -hmm. um, I'm surprised I didn't take anything in the office, though. It's a zero on a pass, so that's probably why you've lost zero. If you've got, you haven't, you haven't lost anything so far, then that's why. Well. I think I only lost one for getting my face burned off because I wasn't there for any of the other ones. Which means we all take it now. You take a you take a sanity roll now, because if you'd lost the maximum, you wouldn't need to bother rolling for it. But yeah, give me a sand roll because you notice there are four of them in the fireplace. Oh, they were in the warehouse. Oh, oh ninety-seven. <laughs> that, that sounds like a pretty definitive fail there. <laughs> right on a fail that. Is a is that a fumble though? If he's below fifty, Sam, I'm fifty five. Oh, you're good. Not, you're good. <laughs> not a fumble. Ooh. Still a d six. Two. Okay, you are perhaps maybe... having met one already with a with a, 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 a fire extinguisher. I feel, but four of them. Five. Okay. Uh... Oh, right. Being Leland, burned alive you're... by them didn't help. That very true. That definitely puts a kind of crimp on your day. Uh, do you want to give me a uh, int roll for that? Come on, that ninety-eight plus. Yeah. Oh, I got an eighty-four, but my int is eighty-five. God damn it! I'm so smart. <laughs> Uh, one one rule that I've always taken is kind of it's not well, kind of bending the rule as such, but if you want to spend luck to fail that int roll, because effectively it makes it a more beneficial result. So if you wanted to burn a couple of points of luck to push your uh, int up to a, your int roll up to an eighty six, I'll allow that. Otherwise, you can just go crazy if you really want. <laughs> um, you know what? It's Call of Cthulhu. I have to go crazy at least once. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'll keep it yeah. fell. Right, in which case, then, yeah, you see these uh, these things there. Have you got any points of Cthulhu Mythos yet? Nope. Well, you've got five now, and yeah, your uh, your moment of insane insight is that yeah, these things are these uh, that are hiding fairly discreetly, almost orbiting one another in the flames that roar up from the uh, the burning logs in this very large fireplace. Uh, that these things are just a small fraction of the uh, the horror that's going to come down from above. That this ultimately their their create their source of creation. Their uh, the point of their inception is just one thing in a larger chain that is ultimately every source of fire in the universe. You're almost getting this uh, what was it scaling out view of eternity and creation that everything is just fire, or everything that will if everything that is not fire will burn. And it's going to start with you right here. How do you want to? How do you want to flip out? Is there a window in this room? Oh, there's plenty of them. Yeah, they they go. They overlook the front of the building, uh, which has one of the have one of the most spectacular views in London, making this one of the most uh, expensive neighborhoods. Yeah, I'm just going to do the Simpsons in the classroom thing, and be like, "We're all going to die," and then jump out the smash through the window. It's all over, people. We don't have a prayer. Ah! Crash. Okay, that will um definitely make Aurora somewhat distracted. I'll also burst in when he does that because I hear his scream. Okay, uh, David, do you want to give me a spot hidden roll as well? 
Uh, 69. What is my spot hidden? The number that would make Lex very happy. It's 60. Um, I'll spin the nine. I'm kind of expecting to see something, obviously. Okay, yep. You're uh, obviously the first thing that hits you is the, the wall of heat. And looking in that direction brings your eyes to the fireplace. How many points have you lost to fire vampires so far? Uh, you said sanity loss. Yeah. Two, um, only two points. Definitely give me a sand roll then. I got an 08. Okay, you're not phased at all. So yeah, zero I'm points on the um, pass. Yep, although there is the uh, the sound of Leland crashing through a, a window. Um, I'm going to say that if you're uh, doing a good running uh, craze dive, I'm not even going to give you damage for that because it's just I just think it's funny. So yeah, you just, you're out on the street without any uh, without any compunction and running down the uh, running down the road screaming. Uh, you can be doing that for one d10 rounds. So give me a a roll on d10. This is John. Seven. Yep. Lucky for some, right? You are running down the street for seven rounds. Um, at which point, yeah, Aurora is uh, looking, first of all, somewhat confused that uh, Leland has just leapt out the window, looks back at Melvin, and then looks over to Davidge as you storm in through the other door. What, what does Edgar do? What's going on in here? <laughs> what, what's Edgar doing upstairs with all this commotion going on downstairs? Leaving. Just just going, nope, and <laughs> just walking out. I'll, I'll come back with backup. <laughs> the backup okay. characters. You, you could you can head on down to, downstairs and out the front door without any difficulty. Okay. I'll get a cab. I'll leave the car. <laughs> Anywhere else but here, please. Right, and yep, Davidge and Melvin. Uh, uh, Miss Williams, uh, I'm sorry. Um, naturally, uh, you'll be remunerated for the damage to the window. Um, I don't know if you saw Officer Leland before his panic, um, but he he uh, recently was burned very badly, and I think the, the blaze here somehow disturbed him unreasonably i'm sorry can we discuss this back in the study i i it's rather warm in here rather un unnecessarily is, is, do you mind uh, but i do as a matter of fact you have you can say what you have to say and then leave oh well right very well um uh and i'm my my plan had been to stall for time while the team did its crack work around the house. Given that one quarter of the team uh, m has further mangled his recent injuries by throwing himself through the glass, possibly onto a shrubbery or an iron fence, uh, that Davidge is here not searching for anything, um, I don't suppose there's much need to stall for a great deal of time, so I'll... And now that I know that she can have me immolated in a moment, uh, I, I'm also reconsidering. So, um, I, you know, I'm going to uh, offer, uh, you know, I, uh, Mr. Brown has already looked at the documents. I can show them to you if you're interested. Um, are you aware that there was a, a, a death last night in the uh, Riverside Hotel? In Chelsea, yeah. yes, uh, a couple of gentlemen previously in your employ uh, attempted an assault on a Mr. Whitaker. Are you familiar with Mr. Whitaker, Miss Williams? Yes, I am. Do you have any idea why a couple of gentlemen formerly in your employ would have attempted an assault on Mr. Whitaker? If they are formally in my employ, I don't know what, what would be the motivations for their actions. Why not ask them? Well, as it happens, uh, as I said, one of them uh, was fatally injured in the assault. The other won't be able to speak for some time. He uh, succumbed, or he, he uh, suffered 
some facial injuries that render him temporarily immobile in the lower facial region. Um, That's unfortunate, but he can still write, surely. Uh, yes, that doesn't mean he's cooperative, however. The man seems downright fanatical and terrified of some event that he anticipates in the immediate future, almost as though he anticipated some sort of attack from the Bosch. Why would he have the idea that the Nazis planned an attack for the near future, Miss Williams? Well, we are at war unless you hadn't noticed. Yes, and we've been taking some precautions, but this man seemed um, has expressed a, a, a maniacal certainty that our doom was imminent. I think that would also seem a fairly reasonable assumption to make, given that we live in a capital city. There is the threat that, or as they say, the bomber will always get through. We are pretty much the the main target in this country, if outside of military installations. Do you speak German yourself, Miss Williams? Yeah. Do you I'm have fine. contacts in the contemporary German state? I haven't been to Germany for a long time, but I have been there. I used to go to the German part of the Alps. Ooh. Um, do you have any um, active correspondence with anyone in Nazi Germany? Are you inferring that I'm an, a Nazi collaborator? Well, again, when uh, someone recently of your employ attempts to uh, murder a, 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 a British magnate in a rather obscure fashion, immediately after another notable citizen with whom you have previously been associated, Mr. Dunbar, was uh, immolated in his office, um, the connections, well, my superiors feared there might be some connection. Do you have any idea? A head cocks slightly to one side. Your superiors? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I've been hired uh, by officials of the Crown. My actual superior was Mr. Dunbar, who died rather excruciatingly recently in front of me. Oh, how unfortunate for him. If you'll forgive me... Miss Williams, you don't look very sad about it. Uh, head returns back, uh, back straight. There might be a reason for that, that I cannot use any of my facial muscles. And there's just this cold stare that looks you in the eye. It is somewhat unnerving to see her. The, the intonation of her voice changes, but her face is just like a porcelain mask. It doesn't change. I'm actually... The cool of her gaze is somewhat comforting compared to the dancing fire behind her. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm like, uh, I'm trying to anticipate, uh, oh, um, maybe Davidge knows whether Angrave has found anything yet. Uh, uh, Mr. Davidge, um, will you see uh, uh, after... Uh, our other colleagues, check on Edgar first and then and make sure John's all right, if you would. And I'll try to wrap things up. We don't need to waste any more of Miss Williams' time, I think. Yes, sir. Um, from your perspective, because so you 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 can see from where that door where you are, past Melvin and out towards the front door, you might have actually seen, whereas Melvin was looking straight ahead, you may have seen stealthy Edgar kind of running past and going out the front door. I did. Yeah. I'm just kind of trying to think of if there's a way that I can extinguish that fire, but uh, I think Funnily it would enough, look have, silly. Having a look around here, it's almost as if everything that could be used to put out a fire of that magnitude has been conveniently removed. Yeah. Plenty of stuff you could throw in the fire to help it make it bigger. Yeah, that too. Uh I'm also tempted to say, oh, Miss, are you aware that you have fire vampires in your in your fireplace? But I won't. I'm not <laughs> going to do that. It's almost like he's got a degree of self-preservation. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, sir, I think that we've got what we needed. Uh, we've had a look around. 
Which oh. She, she cocks mm-hmm. her head to one side of that and looks at uh, looks at David again, looking at you with this cold, emotionless stare. You have what you came here for. Would you like we to have assurance that? that? Uh, uh, y- yes, Miss. We have uh, the assurance that we. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't need to answer to you. We are here on official business as a searching. And I'll turn and uh, walk away. <laughs> Miss Williams, again, uh, if you'll forgive my colleague, um, essentially, uh, it's, um, you know, under these circumstances, occasionally officials uh, are required to investigate accusations, which may be entirely without uh, basis or meaning just because, as you have noted, of the dire extremity of the of the circumstances. So having given the place a quick once over and despite the alarming, uh, I'll give you a card regarding the window repair, which we're certainly yeah. responsible for. The rather bizarre incident of self-defenestration. You don't see that too often. No, indeed. I did. I, I, I mean, if you saw the young man's injuries, you might understand his sudden terror. Although, I think we'll have to take him off of active duty. Uh, I apologize for taking uh, so much of your time. Um, I'll uh, uh, have this warrant uh, extinguished, and you should hear uh, no more from any of these offices. Uh, if there's any questions, please. You could forward them to me. She does somewhat chuckle, and again, just to have her mouth open slightly, and this ha 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 kind of sound come out of her without the again the expression on her face changing is somewhat unnerving. But uh, she then just says, huh, "Extinguish." Very ironic choice of word. Right. Um, uh, yes. Uh, thank you, and uh, and your staff for your cooperation. Um, and uh, I bid you good day. <laughs> yep, she just stag- again sort of stares uh, kind of hole through the back of your head as you as you leave. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to jump into the convertible. I'm going to casually open the door and seat myself as though I wasn't desperately trying merely to maintain bladder control. Uh, that might have helped. We could have peed on the fire. Oh, it's not advisable. I thought seriously so about going go outside the and you getting the to... getting the garden hose. And... <laughs> but you realise you've now cracked the secrets of the end of the the ending counter. You just have to go. You just have to drink as much as you possibly can before you head to the warehouse. Yeah. We need to get the hell out of here, and hopefully, she's not going to send those fire vampers after us. Uh, Car. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, uh, let's just drive away casually. Damage is uh, yeah. is on grave like in the back seat, hunkered down, or I took a cab. Oh, he took a cab. Yeah. Uh, is Leland in the back seat, hunkered down? No, you, I, you see him kind of running down running. the road. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go try to pick him up. You can get alongside him and kind of honk, and that's when he Leland, kind of snaps get out in. of his. Uh, out of his fear. Oh my god! You guys lived! Yep. There were five or six of those things in there. I thought we were done for sure. Uh, I guess she needs them for a sacrifice. Or she might have just roasted us for laughs. Hmm. Uh, Listen. one, one, One touch with those things was enough for a lifetime. Rather. Uh, I think we should transfer... Uh, well, I, I guess we have, uh, I hope Angrave's at the truck and will meet us there. And he's not, you know, racing off toward Dover to get the escape to France by this point. Now that we've seen those close up, um, we're going to need some serious way of stopping them at the warehouse. Yeah, and all all the fire trucks we can summon is all I can think. Unless we can push the whole thing into the river, as I said. She's not there, and neither are they. I wonder why they're 
still in her home. It didn't look like she, I mean, I, I don't know how she plans to travel with her deity away. But um, I, I think the idea is that the fire turns them all into fire vampires and they can leave. So they're going to immolate themselves. Why hasn't she already, I wonder? Well, maybe there's some part of the ritual that they can only do so much. Timing, uh, yeah. We haven't actually seen on Graves' evidence yet, so... Well, they had some candles in the basement. If we screwed up their plans too much, they might just... Unless there's something they need in the warehouse, I don't see... They could just do it in the mansion, and then that would be pretty bad. That's true. They might have some ritual space, though, they need. Yeah. You didn't see anything particularly obvious there. I mean, the only thing that really would stand out as being a nice wide-open space to do anything would have been the back courtyard. Yeah. But, again, that's not that's very open. That would attract the attention of any ARP patrols, etc., or anyone out after blackout. Right, and there's a few hours after sunset that they need... If they get into the warehouse, though, they can close the door so that nobody from the outside will notice them. Mm -hmm. They might also have a gigantic triangle of uh, stone in there. Yeah. At any rate, Norton thought it was the warehouse, and I think he's probably right. So, uh, now that we know the vampires are in her home, and she is, maybe we can do something at the warehouse before they even arrive. I feared we had to wait until later in the day, but we couldn't get there. We can uh, retrieve our uh, army of fire extinguishers from the hotel and station them inside the warehouse. Give the... back to uh, back to Angrave and uh, to Race's house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're heading back to uh, to go meet for Father and Gay yeah. there with the van. Okay, so you, we can bring you all back together again. It's about, let's say that took the best part of an hour and maybe an hour and a half to do that from, to go get to the house, then uh, going around the house and then getting to Teresa's. So you went in about three o'clock, I think we'd agreed last time. So it's now about half past four. Oh, Mr. Green, good to see you. You're going to love this book. And I'll hand you the annotated pyromancy book. I'll, uh, look through it immediately okay. you've got uh, german to begin to study it what was your question i'm sorry you, you've got german i've got uh 40 in german yep you can give me a you can give me a german roll oh i got 18 okay that's good so that's a hard um the main thing is that here it's very handwritten script so, because none of this is printed, right. even the original, uh, the original book itself was still handwritten and illuminated, mm. um, or not, not so much illuminated, but there, there are certain flourishes in the text, sure, like certain sure. bits are written in red and so on. But everything in the marginalia is obviously handwritten in as well, in a very cramped hand, which it does take the best part of the next hour to go through it to be able to right. uh, to be able to decipher what's there. But you do spot with a hard success, maybe something that is cause for concern. Uh, the definitely the word Cthuga, uh, Fathogwa, they come up, uh, Fomalhort, all these references get repeated in a number of places, mm -hmm. expanding upon fire, the relation between fire and the entities, uh, between the star, between the fact one's a god, and this herald of the true flame, this Fathogwa creature that's described apparently riding on a comet as it scours the universe, looking for other places where Cthulhu can burn. Uh, it relates certain instances of gifts that can be taught or learnt to communicate with the uh, with these beings, or how to manipulate flame in particular ways. You come across one particular rite or ritual or spell, for want of a better word, um, that effectively describes a firewalk and maybe it puts the context of why she was stood right next to that uh, big roaring fire into context. Because it describes how you can leap uh, by setting yourself, by effectively de uh, declaring or offering a a prayer to Cthulhu, 
one can immediately self-immolate and then jump into a fire to appear in another fire elsewhere. Well, instantaneous travel between two places, as long as you have a burning fire at both ends. It was essentially you're thinking that it was basically her stood by an immediate get out of jail free card. That if if it, if everything had gone down badly, she could have just said something. This short phrase offered herself to Cthulhu, burst into flames, and jumped into the fire to appear somewhere else in the city entirely. But what does she sacrifice herself? I mean, does she end up? in some other flame somewhere but is she now in fire and she can't get out she would be damaged as a pro as part of the cost so it's definitely something she wouldn't want to do like willy-nilly it's something that she'd have to do under dire circumstance but, but it's she presented with life to, or death she doesn't get to jump back out of the fire and not be burned up i i would assume if she had like a a bathtub right next to the flame that she came out of she just jumped into there <laughs> Once she appears okay. at the other end, then she would be not on. She would be not on fire at the destination point, but okay. she would be just yeah, coming so, out of the out of the bonfire. So I'm I'm envisioning then not to bring up modern references, but like in Harry Potter, where they jump in the fireplace and they come out in another fireplace. Okay, I yeah. Get it, it. Except that it's the to start the whole process, it sets her on fire and does damage at the beginning of the process. Yeah, so it hurts a little bit, but it doesn't kill her. Correct. That's a problem. Uh, that means, and I'll I'll say to the others I've, I, that I found this. It means that during the fight this evening, she might find a way to escape. And not if she's way. distracted by showing her what she really looks like. Yeah, well, which I mean, would give she's us a human. She's a human being. Anybody can deal with. You, know, you might be yeah hideous. we just take advantage of that and then we put a bullet in her no maybe it'll, it'll be just a moment's distraction at all i don't know with I that don't... much psychological damage to enact plans to destroy and convert your enemies into monsters i feel like we could really take advantage of that maybe maybe john doesn't seem to mind looking at himself in the mirror well john's john oh. i mean yeah. he's always a good chap he wasn't a beautiful heiress, at any rate, beforehand. Um, Anne Grave, you have the evidence? You discovered the evidence that we need, yes? Yeah? Yes. We and need to get the stuff we need? To, to Anne. He, he, he'll know what to do, and he'll finally get us all the resources we need. Yeah, F Father and Gay nods. I mean, that, that sounds ideal. I mean, we can, get the, we can get that to him now. He kind of looks off towards the uh, towards the window looking out with the towards the front of uh Teresa's house he just says can you hear that uh what yeah it doesn't it doesn't require a listen roll uh, there does seem to be this droning sound outside oh, the plane. yeah it definitely sounds like a plane or several planes I'm going to quickly go outside and take a look up yeah, there's there's a few people that are doing this as well. You can see uh, people down the street are coming out um, out into view, looking up at the sky. As some people then start uh, start running while I was running in panic, as you just see this almost from one one horizon to the other, this oh. cloud of bombers coming over the um, coming over the uh, horizon. This, this drone that just continues to build and build and build as then suddenly you can start hearing the whir the whirring of sirens as what you thought you thought that for ages since the beginning of the war this won't happen they've it's been all this bra bra bravado for nothing and now you're staring at a, a hundreds upon hundreds of bombers in the sky over london with swastikas on them or oh well, yeah with a nice uh, telescope like that Yep, the Luftwaffe is here. Oh Good boy, God, we those need to a, go. If I hand all the, the evidence, I remember. I'm just gonna hand uh, Father Enge the evidence, and it's like, you take care of it. We're going to the warehouse. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to, I'll get, I'll get these to end, and I'll, I'll see what we can coordinate with any kind of official response. Um, in the distance, that's the point where you start to hear the whistling sound 
of things falling from the sky and just Arms. thud, thud. Oh thud, no. Thud. Green, oh, we're... where's your nearest shelter? Oh, they'll, they'll be. Uh, well, in fact, that's a question for you. you. You would know that there are a few no, nearby. I don't think uh, we can just shelter in place while this, this insane woman's going to plan on summoning the end of the world. Well, we have to go. She can't do it until after the star rises. If we're blown to smithereens before then, we'll be very ineffective. She can just teleport her. to the warehouse with the firewalk. There's another problem. There's going to be no fire people available if they're setting the city on fire. Which is all the more reason we need to get to the warehouse, but we have to be alive to get to the warehouse. Well, then we need to get into a vehicle and start driving before well, it gets really bad. If we're lucky, right now, though, sorry, I was just going to say, if we're lucky, they'll hit the warehouse first and maybe some guys will get called there. Also, uh, Father Enge's uh, a government agent, yes? I'm going to ask for his gut. Because he probably has one. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> in fact, he does. Um, he takes it out, and this is a gun that you're probably not that familiar with. Doesn't matter, give me. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he gives it to you. I'm just trying to get the, uh, the stats for it. Because it's a silenced pistol. Oh my god, this guy's an assassin. He had a very high stealth for a reason. Uh, the, yeah, it's a well rod silent pistol. Oh my god. So, uh, damage is 1d8. On I that, know how it, it works. You like, yeah, every, after every shot. There you go. All right, but so yeah, it's very much a uh, Piha, what's the word I'm looking for? Human resources solver. This is great. Um, now we have two firearms instead of just one. I'll toss, I'll hand Leland the revolver. I think this oh, is going Jesus to... Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we need to go. This I'm assuming he does not have any other we firearms. We can take care of it, I think. I'll, I'll ride in the inflammable tub in the back. <laughs> Drive safely. Do you think we should... No, it'd take too long to fill that water. And Offered Harris, inflammable means very highly flammable. Actually, flammable and inflammable both. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Yeah. Is there anything so, else we can grab from the safe house? What are you looking for? These things uh, are not directly overhead. They're farther away and heading in towards the middle of London. The bombers come from the uh, come from the south, pretty much filling the sky from say one horizon to the other, uh, all in waves. There are hundreds of planes up there. They are raining death all across uh, the sky to your south, and as they pass overhead, all over the top of you, and continuing to do so as they uh, they head further towards the north. London as a whole is their target. It seems that there are people running in the streets screaming getting uh, trying to get to the air raid shelters there are um, evidently buildings which are bursting into flame as incendiary bombs are being dropped all around you this is turning into a nightmare during the day for what was a nice a calm some effectively late summer's day and is now turning into mass panic so would would we be able to estimate when the bombs are going to be dropping literally right over our heads now, yeah, you, you pretty much hope there's nothing coming straight down on top of you. I'm not going to be that cruel. Yeah, that's why we should get hard. into a vehicle right now <laughs> and get to my, the harbor. My reason for asking is because I have incredibly valuable books in my home right there. <laughs> and do I have time to run in and grab them or um, the bombs are dropping? So, if If you want to grab them or... As this may have been something that you've uh, that you could have pre uh, made precautions for beforehand, if they are that expensive, you may have a basement in um, in the house where you've put stuff in there, effectively almost like a, a fire vault. safe. So yeah, yeah. They, they are in a vault, making them protected. All right. in case I've of put this. them in a vault beforehand. So oh, wonderful! That means we can just drive to the now harbor now. <laughs> who's like... who's driving? Who's great at driving? Well, it's my car, so well, you I'll better uh, floor it. We're not taking the truck as planned. Uh, oh, the truck. 
Should we take both vehicles? Whatever's faster. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll take both vehicles. Because honestly, we're being bombed right now. I think that plan has gone out the window. We just need to stop this crazy woman. I don't know what we're going to do when we get to the warehouse now. It's... We can lay a trap. Right, the first thing to consider then, how, or rather, what route are you taking to get there? Now, I'm not expecting you to know London geography, uh, particularly uh, well off the top of your head, so I will outline the the two main options that you have available to you, assuming that you want to go by, uh, by at least by road. The most direct option from here will go, uh, from Teresa's house, would be go towards the Blackwall Tunnel. That will then get you under the Thames and will bring you up an area roughly in the Docklands area, which is very much close to the Williams warehouse. So that is the most direct route. Uh, but that is also directly into the path of where the bombers are flying. If you want to take a longer, but what you think would be probably comparatively safer option, that would be to go via the likes of Tower Bridge and then over the Thames and then look back round from the, from the northwest to then approach the Docklands. I think we need to go under. I think we should you better be a good driver then. I think we should go both ways, one in each vehicle, to increase the likelihood that we're not both bombed to smithereens. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, say that too. Yeah. All right. In that case, the people with the guns should split up. Right. And we had fire extinguishers in the back of the truck, so we'll move some of those into Davidge's vehicle. Sounds good. So if if we're the likelihood we'll both be bombed is halved, I trust. There's no no kind of fire shield that you read spell in, in those annotations, Savage. There is actually. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not so much what you're thinking of. Okay. Um, it's actually a spell called Cloak of Flame. Uh, what it yeah, does just do that, is please. This, what it, what it does is effectively it uh, creates this barrier around the caster that it hurts them again in the process as well, but it also sets anything that attacks them on fire. So it's, yeah, it's, it is the, like a, a wall of flame that acts as a barrier. It's not a force field that keeps us safe from fire. Well, it, oh. it, it kind of doesn't. It doesn't. It kind of it makes you safe by setting you on fire. So... <laughs> that yeah, sounds a now... counterintuitive. <laughs> I should have found the water spells that could uh, make it rain. Or uh... wrong book. <laughs> but as as you have mentioned, the fact that you want to make it rain because this was something that was discussed last uh, last episode. Before everyone parts ways, you can give me int rolls to, or idea rolls to see if you remember oh. or rem remember another option that's available. Double o four. That sounds good. Uh, Twenty nine out of sixty. So that's a uh, hard. Also good. I just got a regular. Oh, regular's still fine. And Melvin? A regular also. In which case, particularly as uh, Davidge is thinking about, maybe the thought bubble comes up about make it rain. Yeah, there was, up, there was talk about potentially getting something like a fireboat or fire truck that maybe you don't have to go over or... Um, over or under the Thames, but literally down the Thames, if you were to find a fireboat. The nearest, uh, the nearest option for one of those, have a look at my notes, would be uh, the docks south of the Blackwall Tunnel, so very close to where the tunnel itself goes under the Thames, docked at Union Wharf, which is north of Trinity Hospital. Okay, I think honestly, we just go all in on the fireboat idea. If we could convince them that, that ammunitions are stored in that warehouse, they could they could douse it constantly with water. I just look at Ongrave and hold up the gun. Convincing. <laughs> I sure. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, these aren't our enemies, these are our comrades. These are our countrymen. So well, yes, but remember that uh two countrymen is uh a more reasonable loss of life than summoning an entire star to immolate the entire planet. Yeah, I guess uh, I don't think N could help us like right away, right away, like when we're trying to leave right now. So we're just going to have to take the boat by force. 
I, I, I thought that we've rethought that. She's not summoning a star. She's summoning the Herald to save them from what humans are going to do to the planet. All the humans are doing what they're doing right now, wow. and we need to yeah. stop. I don't know what that, I don't trust the Herald to not cause more harm than she understands. Maybe. Uh, it, it may not matter at all. We might all go up in flame no matter what happens. But uh, All right. So let's just take the faster vehicle and and just drive to the docks. Yeah. To oh, get that fireboat. I'm sure Green's Roadster is faster than that truck. Yeah. Yeah. With a but big... the truck could also just plow through everything in its way. People, men, women, children on the <laughs> speed bumps. Yeah, it doesn't discriminate. So, which which option are you taking? Fast, uh, small and fast, or big and kills everything in its path? <laughs> uh, small and fast. All right, let's go. Who's giving me a drive check? I'll do it. Humble. Actually, does anybody drive better than normal? I, I've got forty. Oh, you drive? No way. I've only got I also have the lowest luck, so <laughs> you can drive through a war zone. Don't worry. If if I'm gonna take if if I'm gonna drive, I'll, I'm I'll, gonna take the truck. I'll drive the car. All right, very well. Oh, I'm gonna have to spend some luck. Well, at least you've got some to spend. I'm gonna spend sixteen luck. Ooh. Oh, okay. I think last episode I spent like fifty luck. 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 15. It's crazy. Worth it. I've still got 45 luck, so I'm cool. Trust um, me, I'll whittle that down, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, you, so... are man you are managing to die out to uh, put the pedal to the metal and floor it through the streets. Um, you're avoiding howls is being blown up left and right. There are uh, firestorms raging all, all across your path. Um, you are literally driving through what you would think would be a perfect representation of what Aurora described in her vision of the world on fire. The, yeah. the city is burning. There are people running, screaming. There are people running, burning out into the streets, collapsing uh, collapsing down dead, kind of blocking your path, but you are at least able, nimble enough to be able to skirt around them. Uh, the car provides you with a little bit of armour, in a sense, as you are rained down with bits and pieces of masonry, debris, uh, your wind windscreen is shattered. Uh, the side uh, panel glass is being uh, is being battered and broken, but you arrive without any um, serious injury to yourselves. But the car is getting a bit of a battering in the process. Okay, uh, that like me... a sand. Uh, yeah, I think of driving through, especially. Well, we, you wait until you get to the, dock, mm -hmm. the Docklands. There's some uh, description of what happened there. Uh, being that this is a uh, particular historic event that you're uh, going through right now, yeah, give me well, a then. give me a sand roll for g experiencing all this. John's John's familiarity with fire too. Uh, I got an eighteen, so I'm cool. I'm yep, more yep. Uh, my adrenaline is way up because of the driving. I uh, I actually failed, and um, since I'm already indefinitely insane, I'm gonna go into about. <laughs> yeah, if so I take at one, least one, only the one point for uh, for fail. Yep. So nothing on a success. How does Ed go on to flip out in the back of the car? Ah, uh, don't do the red mist. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just. Um, you know what's going to happen? I think I'm going to start screaming, and I'm behind the driver, so I'll start shaking his headrest. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm driving like a maniac. So. <laughs> I think dri driving like a maniac and having someone uh, pretty distracting behind you that will that will force another drive check. Hell yeah! Oh, and I already spent all those fuck. Got a sixty-three. I would have to spend forty-three points. Oh, or no. you could How much? push. And it. I've only got forty-five. Or you can push it. I could do. Oh, it's twenty. It well i'm gonna crash then if i fail if you yeah at the minute you're going to uh, i'd say on at the minute you are distracted enough by edgar that you're going to maybe bounce off the curb hit uh, hit a bollard and it will immobilize the car yeah. but otherwise if you want to push it and then crash it will be damage for everyone in the car when you hit something significantly more solid than just something that wrecks the wheels send the lucky <laughs> car crashes are pretty lethal Everything. Oh my God. 
Um, I'll have less luck than you, Edgar. I know. Uh, <laughs> Told you I'd get through it. <laughs> yeah, pretty I'll, quick. I'll 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 spend the luck. Oh no, I am literally down to two luck. Oh, oh party luck crawl! Here we come. Right, uh, you are barely keeping this car on the road. You're bouncing off the curb, but at least not hitting anything that would uh, that would trash the uh, trash the car on the wheels. So it means you are able to get down to the docks where there is this big old fireboat down there, uh, massive hose at the um, at the bow, another one at the stern, where they just rip water straight out of the Thames and then project it at high um, high pressure onto large raging infernos. Of which there are going to be a whole. This is what you would call a target-rich environment for, uh, for the fire brigade at the moment. And are is there anybody on board that's? They are frantically getting ready to cast off. I'll go running down the docks. There's a warehouse, a warehouse filled with ammunition. We must keep it from blowing up. Yeah, um, you hear one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the. Uh, Deck hands yell back. Yeah, the whole of Silvertown's ablaze. Everything's going up over there. Okay, I'm just gonna jump on the boat and draw my gun and intimidate them it'll, because it'll yeah, be like me an too. atomic <laughs> bomb. Wait, we don't know what that is yet. Well, I'm, I'm just yeah, gonna that, say, be... who knows how to drive? There's a whole lot of people looking very stunned as you're pulling guns on them. They're just kind of putting their hands up and just fro frozen. Uh, feet. Drive a boat. <laughs> I've got one. No, we're gonna no, I'm asking them. I'm gonna force them to drive. Oh. Well, yeah, they know what they're doing. Yes, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of pretty much a whole load of them are kind of going, Well, we're part of the fire brigade. Yeah, how many of them are there? Launch the uh, ship. Would say would say there's five of them. Okay, so I'm gonna say you three off. Okay, and keep the, the keep keep two that like know how to operate it and to drive. Because that way we're outnumbering them, and we can. So it's easier for us to force them to do something. So let's drive. Okay, uh, I'm not going to give you rolls to intimidate them. It does. It's kind of irrelevant. You have a gun, and well, two two people are guns, and they don't have any. So okay, we'll we'll do whatever you say. Especially if you want to go put out a fire at a warehouse. That's kind of what we we do. Damn straight. I hope we don't need five people to run the ship. <laughs> no, um, you mainly you mainly need one person to to pilot, but that's not essential for the whole job. Once you effectively park or drop anchor, you don't need to worry about the the pilot at that point. To use the funnels, uh, the hoses at both ends, or the projectiles at both ends of the boat, uh, if you were to pull parallel to your target, um, you can direct both of them. At a target at the same time uh these high pressure hoses throw out a, an immense amount of water and a very high pressure uh, the skill that you would need to fire them with um because i presume people don't have the likes of gunnery or artillery which would be one particular uh skill to use here the other one would be rifle shotgun because it is effectively like a long barreled gun oh i, I got oh. good oh, skill yeah. in that like, oh, also yeah. we have two firemen so yeah well one of them will be driving now we don't have to uh we hit the warehouse necessarily before it's dark if it gets dark tonight we so we can uh, we can help these gentlemen put out the largest fires they can for the next few hours before we focus on the warehouse can we not okay in this till the star rises she can't do her thing So let's be of much use as we can, given that our city is on fire. Yes. What What time does the fire the the star rise? Uh, it said ten p.m. on ten o five. And what time is it now? Five. Oh, that's a good point, because this depends on how um, how well you roll. So who wants to roll for the pilot of the boat? I point my gun at the man. Yeah, who do you, you as the players want to make the dice? Oh, roll? I'll I'll make the roll, sure. Okay. He's got a skill of 50%. Damn straight. That's also my intimidate to make him try to <laughs> All right. 92. Right. The maybe the fact that he is somewhat under duress 
um, oh, that he's boy. got a gunpoint in his face, that fighting upstream is going to be a little, little tough for him. He, this doesn't leave you much time to uh, to get there. Okay. Roll one d four plus two. All right, one d four plus two. Ooh, roll the three plus two is five. It's going to take you five hours in total to get to the warehouse. That's it. So we might as well just go. Yeah, zero hour. You're you're going to be arriving pretty much at ten o'clock. Okay. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, right? If we can get good aim on them, we can probably take them out. And hitting someone with a high pressure po uh, hose will like pretty much knock them off their feet and distract them, so they can't really just cast. The warehouse out. will have windows on the river, so we hit through the windows first and soak the place. Right. And then we start trying to smash the roof in, and then ra we rain down through what was left of the roof. I'm assuming we it's not already on fire. Much more control than just raining down water on top of the building. Okay. So then then we'll have two people get off the boat. No, oh, two people man the, the cannons, the water cannons. And I think John and I will just have to dismount the boat and take care of the problems that we can't just shoot from the water. I think we're already on the boat. And I understand that we're on the boat when we pull up to the dock. We're going to have to leave the boat to get inside. Okay. Right? Okay. Because, like, you can't just hit everything from the outside. Some of us are going to have to go inside and expose ourselves to this danger. There are, there are a few things that you'll notice because this is going to take a long time to be able to get A, a across the Thames and then be down, uh, down there as well. Um, you're fighting against other boats which are also doing similar things to you. So there's a lot of traffic out there on the river that you're having to navigate around. And even though you are somewhat having your uh, pilot at gunpoint, they are still very much uh, kind of running on Melvin's uh, instinct here that they can try and do stuff to help along the way with all the fire that they can see that won't detract from uh, them being able to get to get there it's just something that they can help while they're passing so you're seeing carnage up along the um, all on both sides of the river as you go and and to put this into perspective the the fires that were recorded in certain parts of the london docklands uh, particularly uh, around where is it uh, quebec yard which is in the surrey docks even to this day, it's the most single intense fire recorded in British history. This place is a raging inferno. Um, the whole Docklands area seems to be a, seems to be hit significantly more than any of the area that you've seen around it on, on either side of the Thames. Um, there's huge stockpiles of timber here. There's uh, paint factories that, of course, they've gone up in white hot flames. There's tire factories. Uh, there's rum stores here. It's a huge, massive storehouse of flammable material, which is making an inferno so great that even as the sun starts going down, it looks like another sun rising on the horizon, lighting up the sky and providing one hell of a beacon for and what you presume would be, well, if there were more bombers coming our way, they're going to sure as hell see this city on fire now. Yeah. The blackout won't mean anything because there's just so many flames around, and this is one almighty glowing beacon for them to home in on. Um, there are hundreds upon hundreds of fire trucks which are trying to deal with the flame here. Uh, you think easily there could be over a thousand fire pumps that are going uh, that are going in the Docklands area alone, trying to put out the uh, trying to put out the flame. And from your relatively safe position out on the Thames, out on the water, you're seeing folks run around there. Some of these are almost little more than boys, or at least young men. These aren't people that are trained firefighters. There's a lot of chaos out there. There's a lot of confusion, and there's a hell of a lot of people that are getting killed in the process. Yeah, you are you are watching carnage unfold before you before your eyes. Now. The Williams Warehouse does have a very distinctive dock or landing platform 
that comes out onto the Thames itself. So there could be boats that park right up towards the warehouse docking area. So if you want to be brave enough, you could park right on their front doorstep or you could pull back and uh, project from afar. It depends on how you want how you want to play it. I think we might just have to strive up there. Well, and the closer we are, the more water power we can force at the warehouse. And then that lets the people who are getting off get off and bum rush the cultists. Gotcha. While the hydro cannon takes care of the fire vampires. Mm -hmm. I will uh, revise my on my math so I've got slightly wrong here. You rolled five hours. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this particular wave of bombing, which uh, goes down in history by another name, uh, gets called the Blitz. <clears throat> uh, that starts at half past five. Five hours is going to take you to half past ten which is half an hour beyond the point when the rich... No! So you're going to arrive just to see the after effects of this uh, go up. So there's so no as... way to speed this up? Without... If you want if you want to burn luck to make uh, to make the uh, roll pass, to make the pilot's uh, shipping roll pass... Push it. I could push it. It's 50-50. Fuck it. <laughs> like there's there's no other option here. Shoot say, the if, pilot. If, if you push it, you're going to end up uh, getting there as by quick as possible. You are going to end up with the boat ramming into the warehouse side. Yeah, and which is not good forget, for the hydro this, cannons. Yeah, forget this being I'm gonna pull back and potentially use the water cannons from a distance. You're gonna be right up in the heart of what's uh, what's appearing in that warehouse when you get there. Okay. Oh, that is a 17. Oh. Right. <laughs> that is in a hard. Which, in which case, the time uh, the time it takes is also different. Uh, roll 1d3 rather than a d4 plus 2. Okay, this could still screw us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I rolled uh, four hours. So two plus two. Oh, oh no, there was no plus two. Oh, it was just oh, one. I, I rolled a, I rolled two then. Okay, so it takes two hours. Yep. So instead of it being half past ten, it's now half past seven. So it's still. Uh, this would put you just after sunset, I believe. Uh, just coming up to sunset. In fact, it's uh, it's now nineteen fourteen hours is when, uh, is when the sun goes down. So you're pretty much just on the cusp of dark. Although considering the whole skyline is completely ablaze where you are, it's kind of irrelevant. It's still very much light. The um, city is but, all fire and the sky is all smoke. It doesn't really matter what the sun is doing. Yeah, but it also means there's no small, smaller sun hanging over the warehouse when you get there. That's uh, probably a more important aspect. So you have a good clear two and a half hours before any ritual goes down. I think we should set up an ambush then. Get the boat in position, and then also see what's going on in the warehouse at all. I think there might be people stationed at this warehouse to do preparation. So if we uh, deal with them, there'll be less to deal with when they all come. Right. Now, Angrave, yeah. doesn't it make sense to fire the water cannons through all of the windows, which will probably yes. disorganize them yes. before you and John go in guns blazing? I think so, yes. And Damage. is it already on fire? Everything else is on fire. The warehouse is not on fire, no. Everything else oh. around it is, but this is this is looks like it's avoided taking any direct bomb uh, bomb strike. But you know, also you'd notice that there's plenty of areas here where I think even uh, Fotheringay might have informed you there were plenty of uh, security guards or uh, police security personnel around the place. There's none now. It seems I like when the, bomb started, when the bombs started falling, they all ran like hell. Now, with the chaos of the bombing, would I get a bonus to my stealth? I, I think that's completely reasonable. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> we could before. very well sneak in and I could use the silence pistol. Potentially, this is, again, these are options. Yeah. Although, looking at the time, we've got about 20 minutes. 
I don't think there's enough to justify another session going on after this. We can probably wrap up tonight, but we will take a bit more than the 20 minutes time. So if people are happy running a bit longer. That's fine by mm -hmm. me. Works fine. Yeah. Great stuff. In which case, do we want to have a quickly well-timed bio break for those of you that took the advice of uh, of filling up on as much water as possible before turning up to the burning building? <laughs> that to, sounds uh, good. Be your yeah. personal <laughs> extinguisher. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Maybe what five minutes? Yeah, five five minutes will be fine. All right. See you soon. What's the name of the tome that I have now that has the annotations? Ah. Uh, the Book of All Forbidden Arts. Uh, the the German title being uh, Das Puck aller Verboten Kunst. Hmm. I can spell that for you. That's okay. okay. I just... I think I've got it written down somewhere else in my notebook. I just couldn't find it. Yep, because there are spells in there for you to learn if you do want to uh, start digging in there. <laughs> There's quite a fair, a fair few, actually. Let's have a quick look. Not just fire ones, too. It had all of the forbidden mancies. And all, all the notes specifically relate to pyromancy. They are, they are Cthulhu-related right. spells. So well, you've got uh, candle communication, which is very helpful. Ah. Uh, so that's the what that's why she had all the candles in the basement. We've had that in a game before, haven't we? I don't think I have seen that. I like it though. It was uh, uh, didn't it was um oh what is his it, name? Um Zane. No, it Zane wasn't was Zane communicating was... with his mother or sister. Or... Oh, that was in Two Edge Serpent, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I yeah. don't know it. Yeah, candle communication was in that, yes. Uh, so, well, yeah, it's not really have... in it. It's just something that, that did come up. In, yeah. Yeah, he, he used. Yeah. Yeah, it's where you have two candles, uh, each recipient, and you basically you stare into the flame and you can talk with the person at the other end as long as you're both on the dark side of the uh, dark side of the sun or dark side of and... the earth, rather. And we uh, can do that now, and it's called a telephone. <laughs> Weird technology. Nah. Uh, you also got Cloak of Fire, the one that I described, which is the one that puts a, a force field around you, but it sets you kind of you on fire at the same time. Yeah. So when you try and do damage, if someone does damage to you or you do damage to them, uh, you end up setting them on fire as well. So I wonder if I wear an asbestos uniform. If uh... <laughs> Got to look stylish while doing it. Uh, there's also the Create Fire Vampire spell. So the one that has the uh, that uses the triangle. Ah. Uh, fire walk. So being able to jump into one fire and then appear out of another one. And pyromancy. Have a vision of the future. If only she'd been um, comfortably in the Midlands when she'd cast that, <laughs> she wouldn't have jumped to conclusions. Well, you, you were exactly right on what you meant. Uh, someone mentioned last time, where it's it's a self fulfilling prophecy. She's seen a the Blitz and the consequence of her summoning for Thogwa. It's she's seen the results of her own actions. Oh, there's also uh, there's more I put in this. <laughs> there's summon bind fire vampire so if you really want to uh to get down with the uh yeah. the making and using them and also call dismiss for thogwa oh oh go ye back to thogwa <laughs> <laughs> oh you could dismiss <laughs> if if he had yeah the time well to i haven't had time to read read quickly so... davidge read quickly <laughs> <laughs> point the gun at davidge read fast Yes, that worked brilliantly on the pilot. It did, actually. We got there in two hours. <laughs> After we reset time. Yes. Mm -hmm. We uh, loaded in uh, an earlier save state. Um, actually, I'll give, I'll give you a bit of a heads up on that. With the, um, with the call dismissed for Thogwa, uh, being able to get an idea of how that works, that... 
you reckon that oh, a you need to have Thorhawk in the sky, so she can't physically do this until ten o'clock. But she's also looking at a fairly impressive amount of magic, or in in mechanical terms, magic points that she's right. looking for to uh, to power this. She needs a, a, quite a lot. She needs sixty magic points to be able to cast this. So she's going so to have to start. So if we can kill all of her friends before she casts it, then she won't have any magic to cast it. And also the fire vampires that you know that was her plan was to use them as the fuel as the fuel source to be able to cast uh, to cool this thing. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So if we extinguish those fire vampires, that's pretty bad for her. It certainly we just don't know how point. easy that'll be. They well, we've got a hydro just, cannon. Might just Ooh. boil the water. Well, okay. only one way to try. The fire it's extinguisher like, worked. The fire extinguisher intimidated the damn thing, so I imagine a high power, high pressure Thames sludge will impede them or scatter them at the very least. If she has to sacrifice them, there must be some sort of... So, um, the plan is, as soon as we arrive, we let uh, Edgar and John off for the Personal business. Will you yep. two be able to take care and operate the hydro cannons, or are you going to leave that up to the firemen? Uh, I'm not bad with a rifle, um, and I'm, we've had a couple of hours uh, of practice. That's true. As we went upriver. How are we going to explain this to the firemen? They probably think we're just mad. You've already had guns at them. We can't explain yeah, it. They, yeah, but the two people with guns them. are going to get off the boat, just letting uh, you know. I don't. I think they'll be relieved when the two men with guns get I'll, off the I'll boat. I'll put my hand into my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into the engine room and get some grease from the engine and just put it under my eyes like <laughs> badass, and then get one of the fire axes too. That'd be good for your wounds, John. <laughs> I, I really don't know. You're operating well out of medical advice, I think. Also, you're sweating profusely, so when that gets in your eyes right at a crucial moment, and you can't see. Uh, It's below his eyes. It's fine. Actually, I can't oh, imagine that he has anything like sweat glands after the injuries he suffered. It's all Ugh. cauterized. Also, yeah, if, uh, eyebrows to prevent the glare. Are you going to make us roll fighting uh, fighting axe? Or... Let's, let's go. <laughs> Depends on what you want to use. <laughs> The the fire the fire axe, uh, that would be, if you're using it as yeah. a weapon, it would be using. That's what base fifteen, uh, twenty, I think. Okay, very well. Let's get back into it. Choose your weapon. Yep. So you have this wonderful burning well, burning. I was going to say warehouse. The warehouse isn't burning, but everything else around it is burning. What's your plan? Well, um, we're gonna. Oh, go ahead, Melvin. Um, well, Edgar, since you've got the pilot's attention, uh, if, is your plan, I understand it, Angrave, is to take Leland and, and prepare to storm the warehouse? Yes, that's correct. Well, and I'll have the pilot drive up right right up to the, the warehouse so you can get a good angle with those hydro cannons. And I see that John's armed himself with a fire axe. Ooh. Are you going to go inside now and see if there's anything you can mess up? Yes. So do you want to give us a signal before we launch the water through the windows? Yeah. Um, and well, how long the should they we might wait? be storing some of those um, fire vampires inside? Don't the say that in front of the staff. I have a gun. It's fine. No, I have to deal with them. Just make sure you say the crazy things outside of their hearing. It's very loud. The world big on fire. All right, very well, very well. Yeah, um, I think you just go off with the fire, uh, the hydro cannons. Just soak the place. That'll draw attention, which will actually help us. Yeah. All right. So as soon as we, as soon as you disembark, we're going to hit all of the riverside windows. Blast them in, soak the place, and then start hitting the roof and adjacent buildings yeah. so as to make it. And then you can assess the situation, perhaps, and direct us further. Good? Yeah, like, 
like a yeah. creeping barrage. You just sort of fire in front of us while we're going forward. All right. So wish John and I luck. You, you've got this, Melvin. You've got this, David. It was a pleasure meeting you. Hey, was last words. Right. Uh, to get some bookkeeping out of the way first, uh, because you've mentioned you're wanting to use axes, there is the fighting axe skill, which is specifically required for using the axe to hurt someone with in combat. It starts at 15%, not 20%. Oh, well, it was 15 But yeah, you know, you've got a better memory than me. I think it was, I think it's uh, uh, fighting spear came up in the game I was running on Wednesday, which was Jeez. 20%. Not the, uh, what are your fighting brawl skills? Mine's 60, so I believe that gives a bonus to the fighting axe. Exactly yeah. that. Yes, it gives you an additional plus 10. Woo. Ah, minus 45. You have five points off. You need 50 is the magic number. So well, you're unlucky. on 15. Now, if you want to use it as a sharp end, then that's axe. But if you want to rotate it 180 degrees in your hand and basically use the flat edge of it, which would just be effectively a glorified club, that would be fighting brawl. Hell yeah. All right. Just give yeah, me, I'll give have a fire axe too. Could I have like a, put a makeshift holster like for it? Good. It's your belt. You can yeah. <laughs> sling it, sling it down your side. So that's yep. that is not a problem. So I've got a well rod, silence pistol, and a fire axe. <laughs> Madness. You, you came here. To, you came here to do business. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Let's get the map. On the yeah. So the... Leland and I are sneaking under the cover of the uh, bombing. Gotcha. I can't share the map of the warehouse yet because it's all full of spoilers, unfortunately. So you land at the docking, uh, the docking platform. There is no one in sight. Now the exterior door is rolled down, but you can see through the windows. Or I'll rhyme, wind back a bit. You're using the cannons to blow in the blow in the doors and the windows, or are you going in more stealthily? Because kind of making that is going to make one hell of an entrance, and he's going to be heard. The, when they disembarked, the plan was that we were going to blast the riverside wide open, which we thought would create enough distraction that then sneakiness would be relatively easy. Okay, so the, they'll give you options to sneak in via other means. I, I, I'll buy that. Right. So once you're on the once you're on the docking platform, and then make your way along the very thin strip that would get you alongside either side of the warehouse. Uh, there's basically a series of alleyways on both sides. Uh, you unleash with the cannons, and there is the sound of breaking glass, ripping wood, metal, and you see what's in the area be beyond it. There's this large storage area. Uh, there are crates piled up everywhere where this is a legitimate shipping warehouse. So this is where all the cargo, basically, that would have been loaded onto ships is currently stationed. And it is being, currently being flown around like crazy via, the, uh, via these high-pressure cannons. It's making an absolute ton of noise, which will give... Uh, Edgar and John, plenty of opportunity to get a couple uh, to get bonus dies on both of their stealth rolls. Now, for the two of you, you have multiple options of how you can get into the building. You could either say go in via the big uh, the big door that the roller doors that have just been smashed open behind you, or there's windows that go into the storage area on either side to the left and right. There's further windows down the alleyway on the same wall that look into the room beyond the storage area. Or you can go out onto the main road itself and then go around to what you think would be the equivalent of the main entrance or the front door. Um, let's do the side windows in the alleyway because they're pro whoever's inside the building is going to have their attention turned towards the rolling gates that's just been smashed open. Yep, I'll buy that. Well, in the main storage area, the one that's currently being hosed uh, from the outside, as described, lots of storage boxes that are now being flown around like ping pong balls with, uh, with the amount of water that's going in here. You see there is an interior door, a, a very large, almost another going roll-down door, that then leads into another partition almost as big as the first storage area. So that's where the second window looks in. 
in there there is a massive stockpile of timber kindling and what looked like um well, actually, we'll see if you recognise what they what they are. Have you got a, any demolition skill? There's these weird blocks that look almost a bit like uh, small breeze blocks or small uh, big bricks with but metal strips coming out of them uh, that you can see them positioned around this around and within this massive bomb bonfire in the making. Uh, there's also then a series of doors on the right-hand wall that go into what you think would be offices, more of these crates around the exterior of the room, and a large set of stairs that go down into a basement area on the far side. There's no one around up above, on the, basically on the ground floor. Your egg is muted. If that's the case and we don't see anyone... Um, I'm going to use my ears and I'm also going to use my, my hands to feel vibration on the floor for people running. Mm -hmm. it's a massive concrete floor. Um, sound of vibration doesn't yeah. carry particularly far on concrete, but okay. you can't hear or feel anything coming. Okay. I guess we go into the basement, huh? Yeah. You got my I'm back, Leland? Gonna... I'm just going to hand him some medicinal cocaine. <laughs> I'll like, take some medicinal <laughs> cocaine. <Sigmund> Freud loved it. <laughs> the rage. So you're going down into a cultist filled basement with just a whole white powder all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your war face, Angrave. <laughs> oh, For king amazing, and country. Amazing visuals there. <laughs> All right, so you're going through the windows on uh, yeah. into the the area where they've got presented as their ritualistic bonfire, mm -hmm. right? Okay, um, there is a massive skylight above the uh, above the bonfire as well that's all ready to go. Uh, all the doors that you can see on the right hand side lead to various designations or offices. There's one that blatantly leads to reception, and then two more offices either side of that, and then the main entrance would have been on the other side. And then you've got the stairs leading down. So, um, Davidge and Melvin, you can see uh, they've gone in through the window, uh, gone further. They've gone a fair way down the length of the building, and then through the second window into the body of the building. Yeah. So the um, the skylights are visible from the riverside, uh, especially from the fact if your as your hoses are clearing out this wall of crate that was in front of you, you can see the skylight as. Um, I'd I'd say you could see it if you could get through the interior partition wall that's in between the first storage area and the bonfire, the kind of the ritual area. Um, give me three D ten between us, or uh, he's on it. Yeah, see, between, uh, e any either of you can give me the three D ten. Fifteen. Okay, it takes you a little while. But as you can, as you continue to hose this area, the force from the uh, from the hose will batter that wall, that uh, that partition wall door down. And once that wall comes down, that's the point when you can then see the skylight. And I was hoping for something like a skylight, uh, which is often how warehouses are lit because they're. And I want to flood whatever is in there. I don't. I assumed that she had some sort of... I assumed that the, the creatures would be there, but whatever is there, I want to make as damp as possible. And if I can rise it up, you know, all the better. So um, I've also been sort of trying to cajole the two remaining members of this fire crew who are understandably traumatized. Just explaining that while my colleague's behavior was eccentric, it's because there's something of an inordinate secret destructive power in this particular warehouse. So that even though the, the timber and rum and things are all nightmares, this is we don't want this to go off. I was about to say, they are a little bit confused why they're dousing a build, the only building in the area that seems to not be ablaze. But once you give that actually very rational explanation to them. In this case, no, we're, we're preventing it being an even bigger problem if it does eventually get hit. So, so they I will keep continue saying hosing. explosives. 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but as I say, it you took it took a fifteen. So that's it's going to take you a little while to be able to break down that wall and then see what's in there. But once you see the fact there is this massive bonfire in the making that's Ooh. in there, you can then start hosing it. Even though it does take time, this does actually provide Leland and Angrave with actually a bit of an advantage because it means water isn't just going to start flooding down into that basement for a little while yet. So their, their presence isn't going to be announced immediately. And if we could have seen where they were heading, sort of, you know, from where we were, we don't want to flood right where they are because we don't want the building to come falling down on top of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, where so they're yeah, heading we're... is actually just out of sight from where you are. From where you are, it's, there's the kind of that partition wall or that big doorway that connects the two, uh, the stockpile, the ritualistic area with the bonfire, and the storage area. The stairs are tucked behind the the more solid wall, so you right. see them kind of go across and then out of sight. So, but say so because it's a completely solid concrete floor, all the water that you are projecting in there is eventually going to work its way down that staircase, which yeah. would be an immediate problem for them because obviously the people that want to make a big fire that are downstairs are going to go. Hang on, there's lots of water. We better go and deal with that. But it means that Leland and Edgar can get down there before stuff kicks off so uh let me bring up a bit more bigger map here all right the two of you head down the stairs the basement area doesn't cover the whole footprint of the building it covers kind of half of it in got a rectangular block you think so it go out as far as the front of the building where the reception area is and then from where you are but not any further back towards the river uh, there are <clears throat> there are two doors at the bottom of the at bottom of the staircase there's one which is directly ahead and there's one to the right both of which are shut okay. any talking that we can hear from each door give me a listen Rob. all right very well not a fair amount in that, so hopefully here's for a success. I got a 40 out of, I believe, 40, 45. Success. You hear there is uh, noise coming from the, the door on your right, but it's not immediately on your right. It's kind of muffled as if there's another door. But someone is def There are people definitely down here, and you can hear them talking. Um, it means at least kind of, two, unless they're talking to themselves. No, there's more than that. You can you can hear there's like half a dozen people here. Fucking hell. Um, but the fact there is another door at least between you and them. Okay. So we're going to go into the other door then. The one straight the one ahead. Without, yeah. Okay, that opens up and it becomes very immediately obvious what this is. It's a boiler room with a massive furnace in the one corner with the door which is open completely and would have provided enough room for someone to dive into or dive out of that furnace space so this is how you think potentially aurora presumably has used this to get here because or she set off before uh, before the bomb site so if we just shut the boiler door and then like put an object in front of it they'll catch on fire again and burn alive yeah. Also, is there a water pipe going into the boiler? Uh, yeah, there would be. You got a fire it's the water pressure. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, we could I... sabotage the the her teleportation to just kill her. <laughs> well, this would be her needing. Presumably, she's already here. Uh -huh. But this this would be her method of escape, or one of her methods of escape, if you Not wanted to long. completely screw it up. If there's a high pressure main going into this boiler, I mean, we might scald ourselves if we hit the wrong pipe, but we could just flood the basement completely. Uh, you can see there are there is another door that leads out of here. So depending on how big the basement is, it may take some time, but it could happen. Yeah, let's take a peek. We're kind of doing that for you too from above. Yeah, yeah, that's you, true. That's true. You're raining water from above as well as from below in that case. <laughs> right, uh, the other door leads into effectively a wood store, or at least a fuel storage area. So this is where you've got plenty more uh, material for the uh, material for the uh, for the furnace. 
Yeah. Uh, so lots of coal, uh, sorry, a coal bunker, etc. But that that is a dead end room. That room doesn't go anywhere else. Okay, so she might already be here. Um... How can we can we just shut off the the boiler? You can you can just manually turn it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's do that. Okay, and it. hopefully it'll make just enough noise for some people to come out. But not no. all of them. Yeah. If you are hoping to attract someone's attention, then give me a luck roll. Oh, this will be a party luck roll between John and Angus, oh, I mean, who has the lowest. Oh, oh yeah, John and I. Well, I've got twenty. So here we go. I'll blow the pilot light out. Seventy-three the furnace. Okay. Um, they might notice eventually, but they are not immediately noticing. They might have other issues on their hand at the minute. Okay. Then, in that case, since there's a room before the room that they're in, we might as well go there after we turn off the the light, pilot light. Yes, sir. Okay. So you head back out into the stairwell and then take the door, which is now on your left, as you come out of that door. Um, yeah, you open that up, and it opens up into a fairly long corridor, which runs pretty much, you think, what would be the width of the building footprint above. Okay. There's one, two, three, four doors on your right, three doors on your left, and one door right at the far end. Uh, because you passed your listen roll, you're fairly sure that the uh, the noise you heard was coming from the first door on your left, or the first door on your right. And it sounds like half a dozen people in, all in that room, huh? Yes. Well, Jesus. Definitely definitely people in there. Multiple people in there. Yeah, I don't think we can take them all at the same time. We're going to have to get a little sneaky. Let's look in the other rooms. We have time. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So if you're going past that door, that door is partially open. Oh, it is? Okay. But it's only partially open. So as you go past, you can... If you want to take a glimpse in there, that point, then I'll ask for a stealth roll. But it gives you it gives you an idea of what's in there. I can't risk it. Hey, you're playing it safe, going straight past. Yeah, for for John, John might be a different story. I will spend thirteen to pass. Okay, right. Um, in which case, this is where you find the servants. So you find like the butler, the housemaid that you saw earlier. Um, they're a bit singed, as if they've just thrown themselves through a uh, through a fire to get here. But you can see they are all prepped. Uh, they've taken off any loose clothing, uh, so they're pretty much down to basic attire. But each of them has a holster, whereby you can see they are armed with pistols, not fl uh, not flare guns like you've seen previously. They're all carrying oh, thirty-two automatics. And Aurora is not there. Aurora is not there. No. Well, right, we can take out the butler last because he has really bad eyesight. <laughs> yep, I he, will he just might be... <laughs> go, go. I'll just whisper it to Angrave. Aurora is not in there. Okay, we got to keep moving. But Thirty-two automatics. Jesus. To give you a head count on who is in there, there are six people in there. Okay. Uh, there are one, two, uh, three male, a uh, three male, three female. Right. The the next doors, in fact, all the other doors that are down here are all shut. So it depends on what you want to do with them. I mean, to be honest, right? Since you have a gun, John, you could spend some time aiming and just shoot one in the head, and then we can run up the stairs and just keep them there in the basement. And if they ever go up the stairs, they'll get hosed down with the water cannon effectively keeping keep away like we're playing keep away from the giant pit the bonfire pit on the first floor that's true the bonfire pit does seem like it's going to be the center of the whole deal yeah i'm personally in favor of locating aurora first though since we have free reign down here at least for now all right very well if we can see through the keyholes or anything i don't know how old this building is yeah, let's, let's take a look. Okay. Well, uh, they're I fairly was... modern, John. <laughs> I was going to ask for listen checks, for but I will buy spot hidden if you're looking through keyholes. I'll I'll listen. 
good because John would not be a good boyfriend. He's a bad listener. All oh, right, six. pass. Pass the spot hidden. So that is a... Right, so spot nine. hidden, you are specifically looking. Right. Uh, you will see her then when you get to a particular door. But I now need to see if you need to make another sand check because I don't think you've seen a proto-fire vampire yet. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, boy. Yeah, proto fire vampires are a separate be a separate entity. So, uh, in fact, did Edgar pass a spot hidden or? I passed the listen. You passed the listen, right? Okay. <laughs> you hear noise noise coming from the door that is next along from where the staff were. So also on the right hand side of the corridor. Okay. So if you're if you kind of gesture towards John to say that way. John then goes and has a look in the keyhole. Yep. John, can you give me a sanity roll, please? Perfect. My san is is pretty depleted. Oh, 44 out of 45. Oof. Oh, okay. In, in which case, you are, you're, spared, you're spared another uh, potential bout of insanity. Um, what you see here, then, is there is uh, Aurora is definitely in the room. And she is very quietly, uh, seemingly giving some almost like a pep talk or instructional commands to two other things which are in the room with her. One of which, uh, in fact, no, sorry, two of which are fire vampires and one of which is a proto fire vampire. This is a being which essentially think it's an uh, it's a almost animated corpse that is burning. It's like a human candle. It's like the human torch, but it's been very quickly eroded in front of your eyes to the point where all that's been, the, all that's left over time will just be flame that is completely consuming this thing. Um, you are seeing bits of bone and sinew uh, that have been bathed, bathed in flame that's kind of lighting up the ribcage from the inside, uh, light shining through one eye socket where an eye should be, and it's just burning away what was just a, you think a looks like one of the security guards that potentially she's gone yoink and grab because you you happen to save Whitaker because this would have been his fate if you'd uh, if you'd not saved him. I'm just gonna. Oh. Yep, yeah, and because you pass your sanity roll, I won't have it as an involuntary action where you effectively alert them to your presence, so you remain hidden outside. All right, Hungrave. Perhaps uh, it would be a better idea to keep them bottled down there. Right. I think we can, if we both aim at the um, the servants, right, we can effectively just take out two of them and flee upstairs. Well, you we have do the big have guns. You do have a silenced pistol. So maybe yeah, you but could they're just all grouped together. And, and they would just be like, Whoa, where'd that come from? I'm going to see a bullet happen? in the head of one. <laughs> uh, it'd be more effective if one person was drawn out and then taken out. True. Yeah. Could we, like, imitate her voice? What? Uh, that would be an acting role. So if you want to give me an art craft acting, that'd be good. I'm going to do it. Massive 5% here. <laughs> No I'm way. Gonna do it. All right. That's if he's going to do it, I'm going to hide behind some cover and get ready to take a shot. Okay. And there's a few different places. Well, the only oh. real places to hide here would be to open another door and then stick, basically use the doorway as cover. So kind of leaning around the edge of the door frame. I can't so lean you... out from the stairwell. Yeah, that's you can go back to the stairwell and do that, or you yeah. can go to one of the other doors because th there is a door that goes out to the stairwell, which is kind of encompassed in my statement of leading around the door. Okay, yeah, well, I'll just do that. I don't want to open up another room of horrors. <laughs> <laughs> There's no sound coming from any other room, but still, fair comment. So, yeah. All right, you, so can, I... you can head back. You can head back to the stairwell, the door with the stairwell, and keep that open. I rolled a twenty, but I've been no building way. up. I've been building up luck refreshes for a little while, so I'm oh, going to spend it down. Okay, and this this is to to try to lure. I'm I'm going to. What was the name of the guy that we saw? It was like a oh, Miles. Brown... Miles. Miles. I'm going to say, 
Miles, can you co can you come out here for a second? Okay, so you're making your uh, success. You're making your successful art craft acting role. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe his hearing isn't as great as his eyesight. So, and you, you already know how good his eyesight is. Um, he comes out into the uh, into the corridor then, and he starts heading towards the room that that holds the the gang of them next door. I'm going to shoot him in the head, and then just go Woof, with yep. your uh, silence. <laughs> well, pistol. Rod. I will give you a bonus die on this for being okay. pretty much point blank because he comes through the door. Sounds good. Die, Mar Oh, that's a 19 already, so. <laughs> oh, jeez. A 19 and then a 69. Nice. <laughs> Again, Lex would be happy. Yeah, he would. Right, uh, 19 is what degree of success? 19 is a hard, but I'll spend I'll spend the 9 to get to the impale. Extreme. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, D8 plus 8. D8 plus 8, yes. There's a good chance he might survive. Uh, nope, not if I rolled an 8. I'm pretty certain that none of them have 16 hit points. Let so, as he goes down, one in the forehead, you catch his body, John, <laughs> before it hits with a thud. I'm going to do a sand roll. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to say you're splattered with part of the butler's brains. Okay, I failed the sand roll, unsurprisingly. Okay, um, at that point, I'm going to say that you do have that involuntary action that you do oh, no. gasp and make a noise, <gasps> which will attract Aurora from the uh, from the room that she's in. Uh oh, uh, so, take his thirty-two automatic. Okay, I'm dual wield. I'm tri wielding <laughs> <laughs> with that axe. <laughs> right. Um, she opens the door. Shoot her, please. <laughs> And the, sees the fact there is the butler dead right in front, uh, right in front of her, leaps, leaps backwards and just screams this command of. <laughs> and I think this point we'll head into combat. Well, it's proper initiative anyway. Let's have a look at. Ah, uh, we gotta get upstairs. <laughs> you both got readied weapons. Yep. So that will put you on at least plus fifty of where you are. So, John. Only if we choose the fire. Yeah. Hmm? Only if we choose the fire, we can't like that, run. That's true. Yeah. Right. So, Max, might as well fire on, then. Uh, John's on sixty, and then Edgar's on forty. Forty. Ugh. And the uh, delightful fire vampires that are coming out first go on Dex eighty. So, two fire vampires and a proto fire vampire. The proto goes uh, significantly slower because it has to walk rather than the other two, which fly out. But if John um, chooses to just shoot Aurora, he definitely can before the fire vampires get to him. <laughs> you can certainly try. Although, so she is definitely going to die for, uh, effectively because I said she's already diving back. Yeah. She is diving for cover. So I'm gonna see if that gives her or gives yeah, up to you, John. Die. Up to you, John. I'm unloading with both pistols. Oh my god. We we've been had. <laughs> we've been made here. Okay. Right, I'm gonna try and dodge then. So see if this gives you a penalty die on your shots. But he's point blank too, so cancels. But out. he's also firing three shots. <laughs> yeah. And I got ten out of fifty, so that is an extreme on my dodge. So All yeah, right. if she <laughs> she successfully leaps to uh, leaps down out the way. So, yep, penalty down all shots if you're going for it. All right. So, oh, God. Ooh. Oh. Okay, that's one pass at least. Okay, so only one hit. With which she just unloaded with two handguns. <laughs> And they, they do I think they were different... both they were both thirty eight, right? Or thirty two oh, versus thirty eight. The revolver is a thirty eight, so which is a D ten. And the sure. handgun, the thirty two auto is only a D eight, so depends on which one you've hit with. Well, uh I'll roll fifty fifty. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh my god, wait. Sorry. Um okay, so I guess Four will be thirty-eight. Okay, so I hit it with the thirty-two. Okay, so, so that's the eight. 
Let's get roll the d8. Oh no! One, I like shot her ear off. <laughs> In which case, it blows through that wonderful red hair of hers that covers half of her face and nicks the uh, the ear underneath that wonderful uh, groomed exterior. So, yep, so I'll make a note that she is down a single solitary hit point. It's just you need some plastic already. surgery for that, you asshole. <laughs> More plastic surgery. Well, she killed her plastic surgeon. Mm-hmm. Right, so now say so we go into regular decks order. Um, you can elect to use your guns, but you're there going to be absolutely useless against five vampires. Let's so, run. Yeah, well, the, the five vampires go on 80, so they, they go first as they fly around that corner with instructions to kill. The two of them come out of there because the proto vampire is basically just a walking corpse that is completely ablaze. So it has. Let's say different stats. Uh, that is Dex of. Oh, they actually they're faster. They go on Dex ninety. Ooh. So the lumbering proto vampire comes out of the room first and tries to give John a hug, which will no, effectively try and John. set you set you on fire. Right. Um, that's a brawl attack. Do you want to try and fight or fight back or dodge? You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna fight back with the axe. Okay, so that effectively is trying to put something bludgeoning in the way between you and it. You have to get a better degree of success. No, that's already fail. All right, 10 is an extreme from me, so oh. that's max damage. That's 2d6 burn plus 1d4 damage bonus. It's uh, over. <laughs> it's over. 12. I'm dead. 12, no, 30, John. 40, 16 damage as this thing bear hugs you into uh, into oblivion. Ah! Yeah, you are you go up like a Roman candle and it just continues to hold you. Uh I, I, good. you want to give me a sand check for seeing uh um, John suddenly uh, suddenly meet his uh, meet his end. His fiery demise. <laughs> I failed. I um, I'll only put one on it. But that's enough to give you a protect. Yeah. That's enough to give you a bout. So you uh, you now go stomach start raving crazy. All right, what do I get? Uh, uh, my brain has suddenly gone. I've completely just look up the character names all the time. Uh, Tom, you've got the chart there. Yes, you're also muted. Yes, one d eight. All right, you want me to roll one d eight? Let's do it. Why don't you roll? Oh, that's eight. There. That's uh, that's the red mist, <laughs> which is appropriate, uh, right? <laughs> right? So, um, uh, for for one d ten turns, one d ten rounds. All right. Uh, ooh, two. You're going all out crazy for two turns, trying to kill, uh, trying to kill everything. But the uh, the two valid targets at the minute are two fire vampires. Well, would I be in my mind enough to know that they're to kill them is to need water. I would say yes. You you would know that you need to get water. But right, the enough, smart thing to do would be to run upstairs. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to run to the boiler room because I'm going to okay. try and smash the the water pipe to have it okay. jet out. Oh, you you go significantly much for lower down the initiative order than they do. I know. So I'm ready. Yeah, they're both going to fly at you. They're all they Ooh. need to do is touch you. So. That is. Oh boy! Do you want to? I was gonna say, do you want to dodge or fight back? Fighting back is not really a good idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll dodge. Um, I'm hoping for the Matt Sanderson luck. I've, I've been rolling pretty good. That was like two tens in a row oh, uh, in a row for that. And I do have a fighting skill of eighty five. So, okay. okay. What degree of success have you got, if any? Uh, all right. I've got a hard. Uh, 36 out of 55, I can spend down to a hard. I can spend six plus three, nine, which leaves me at two luck. Okay. So that's the first one. Yep. They only get one attack around. That's your saving grace. The next one will get a bonus die because you fought, uh, because you've dodged them around. So it gets, over, it gets outnumbering. Oh, this is, this there. is looking real bad. Bonus die on an 85. Again, do you want to try and dodge this one? I think so. 
I will take 46 rather than 76. Okay. So in that case, but I still pass. But yeah, that's only a regular success for me because my hard is 42. So regular from you cancels out my oh. regular success on my fight. <laughs> Curse you! Right. Now it goes around to your action. You're going to try and leg it to the boiler room? Yeah, and I'm just going to smash the the water pipe with the axe. Okay. Um, give me, as you run past the doorway uh, to get to basically where all the staff were, because they also have actions, yep. uh, give me a dex roll to see if you can avoid being shot at by the uh, by the folks that are basically saying, oh shit, someone's just run past and as they oh, just kill, kill, kill. I have a dex of 40. Woo! 76, I felt. Okay, I'm going to give one of them a the chance to, uh, to get hit on you then. Will the door provide armor? Or damage reduction. I will give them a penalty die on the shot because they're yeah, firing through a narrow, uh, basically like a narrow slot. Uh, you do have the option though, if you want to uh, try and dive for cover, which will inflict another penalty nope. die on the shot. Okay, so just going with the one penalty die. Thanks. Yes. And well, I don't even need to look at what the other dice is. I've got ninety three on one set of my dice, so nice. And it clangs off the uh, the concrete wall on the other side of you. And then you are through into the stairwell and then round into the boiler room. Yep. Uh, next round, both, uh, well, the fire vampire, the proto fire vampire is still going to be hugging John because as far as oh, it's concerned, it's, it's going to just burning him to a complete cinder. Uh, and then the other two are going to be uh, hot on your heels, quite literally hot on your heels. So first one is going to try and ram, uh, ram itself towards you because again, all it needs to do is touch you. Dodge or fight back? Dodge. Okay. Oh, God, please. Hard. You're, you're apparently your wish for the Sanderson dice roll apparently is answered by the polyhedral gods. Nice. 72 is, 72 is a regular success. I don't think I'm going to get enough. this lucky uh, for the second one, to be honest. And now, it, now because you've dodged, I get a bonus die for the yeah. second one. Oh, that's a fail. 48 is a regular success. All right. So it's not any, it's not particularly as harsh as it could be. Uh, I'm really on fire today, huh? Yeah, brunch. Uh, give, ironically enough, now give me a luck roll. Uh, <laughs> I got a luck at two. <laughs> Woo! 31. Fail. What a shock. Right. So I do 2d6 burn. So that is. Nine on the foot on oh, the burn. I gotta roll then, con. Yep, give me a con roll. Yeah, I, luckily I have eighty con, so uh, that's hard. Okay, so you're you're awake. Twenty two, but also you're on fire. I grip the axe in my hands, and I gotta I just gotta smash the water pipe. Right, okay, this this would be a good way to try and put yourself out at the same yep. time. Right. Um. The water pipe, I'd say, is going to require a certain amount of damage to be able to pierce it and get through it. All right. Strength or uh, I mean, brawl? I'm going to put it as raw, raw strength, because you right, can't right. exactly miss the pipe. That would be a bit a bit hard. A bit okay. Harsh. Very but well. Whether you have the strength to break it open and then uh, be able to get it down uh, to get all the water pour pouring down upon you. All right. Well, I do have a uh, a 70 in strength, and I did roll a 36, which is one from a heart. I will spend one of my two luck to make it a heart. 50% of your luck gone in one roll. I love it. <laughs> oh my God. At, at which point, you are doused with uh, water coming out of this thing, which will put you out so you don't take further damage on the next round, unless they come and touch you again, which is potentially an option, but then they are going to be getting so close to you, they themselves may get doused in all this water. This would allow you to fight back with water as a method to try and put them out. Okay. It's looking pretty grim. Yeah. Uh, the guys in the room behind, they're going to be somewhat still cautious. They're not going to do anything this round in terms of interacting with you. They're going to be coming out and kind of doing the, not the most world's worst commando impression of going out into the corridor, checking to see what's uh, what's happening, and then moving out into the stairwell. So they're still one room away from you at this point. Uh, the next round, you've got still got two uh, two fire vampires dancing around with you in the boiler room. Okay. 
uh, but they are they they were ordered by their uh, by their master or mistress to kill 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 so the first one's going to come in towards you uh, so you can dodge completely out of the way or you can fight back with the water which will potentially have the ability to do them dam uh, proper damage how would i fight back with the water what role is that you're you're effectively splashing around. You're basically throwing yourself around under this broken mm -hmm. uh, broken water pipe, just uh, almost like interpretive oh. dance. You could say you're you're just complete trying to spray water anywhere you can and hoping right, right. one bit of it splashes them because they have next to sod all hit points. Once they're hit with the water, that's it. They they gone. And that's uh that's brawl, right? Uh, I would say or... fighting brawl. Yes. Fight, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm fighting back. Okay, you're fighting back. All right. Yeah, God, nice God. I got an extreme. 28 is a hard for me. And oh, I thought, eight. oh, that's good. Oh, wait. Um, right. In which case, uh, do 1d3 uh, points of water damage. Oh, please. Uh, I rolled a four, so that's a two. Okay. Uh, this thing, you hear the steam come off this thing. It gutters and sparks, but it doesn't quite go out. All right. They have mechanically, they have three hit points, so you've done no! two. <laughs> so it has one left. It's hanging on by a thread. Uh, the other one is then going to come in to try and uh, to try and get you as Finish well. Finish me off. It's gonna. It's got a bonus die. Yep. It this does. one I'm gonna dodge because like you, you could like stand under the water, couldn't you? I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's, all it needs to do is to touch one part of his exposed body, and then there's going to, uh, I, I just light up. Ah, yeah. yeah. uh, thirteen. That's crazy. So that's going to be an extreme as well. Yes. No, okay, thirteen my... is a is a hard. Uh, but I can't... you're also, but you're dodging. You say, yeah, yes, I am dodging, which cancels up my twenty-five, which is also a Fuck hard. Yeah. So <laughs> useless, bloody five vampires. Right. I, I'm honestly in shock on how I'm still alive. <laughs> I, I think one of the, because um, you've got shit or luck, so I'm not going to ask for. Well, no, because there is a chance you could roll one percent. Give me a luck roll to see whether they actually, uh, how many of them potentially come through the door. To I'm not rolling a one. <laughs> not. You, I rolled an eighty nine. Right. In which case, the other uh, some of the other servants start coming in, so they are also going to uh, start opening up. Oh god, it's gonna be like firing squad here. At some point, isn't water gonna to start to pour in from up above and fill up the basement? Because we're it's, it's gonna start bit. coming down. Uh, I'd say there is a small not like a small stream, but there is definitely a good torrent of water coming down the stairs, which I will say is actually gonna limit how many people are out in that stairwell to get through into the boiler room. So um I will let Edgar have this. Roll me a D3 to see how many folks come in. <laughs> Roll low. I rolled two. Okay, so two of the six. So yeah. you have stopped four of them coming in here. So two of them are going to come Two in. of the five. Yep. Again, they are all, uh, they're both armed with 32s. Oh boy. So it's just going to be... You don't know what their skills are. <laughs> oh god. Oh right. god. <laughs> So you never know. One, if they roll really bad, might end up shooting the other one. Please. Matthew Sanderson, luck. <laughs> right. Here we go on the first one. Uh, again, uh, do you want to dodge and die for cover to get into the no. penalty die? No. No, because I intend on just barrel rushing past them up the stairs. Okay. I can't do that well, if I dive. The first one hits the, bo hits the boiler. <clears throat> and then the next one. Oh! What's the malfunction range on this? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah the other one just goes click and starts looking at the gun in kind of disbelief fucking dice right. oh my god my wish came true <laughs> uh, I am replacing those dice and rolling another set because they have failed me for the last time <clears throat> uh, back to the top of the round with uh, well, in fact you can see, uh, it's your go at the bottom of the round because your yeah. dex is so low I'm just gonna I think my only chance of survival here, now that I'm uh, done with my red mist, is to rush past them and go up the stairs where the hydro cannon is. Okay, yeah. you want to literally flat out try and charge? Yeah, past them. Yeah, I have to. This is um, this is the only escape. 
I will give you your choice of strength or dex. Strength. Okay, so if literally you're barreling like a rugby, Power! rugby tackle through them. Oh my god, this is awful. I gotta pass. Thank you. All right, so uh, this will be opposed via... Okay. It's just the regular. Yeah, again, you ain't seen what their strength is. I've used all the good stats on the ones you encountered beforehand. Oh, a regular success, you say? Or... Yeah. Right, my 40 is dead on the str uh, their strength. But I have but a then, higher strength. We then compare who's got the higher yeah, stat. Yeah, I have so, a yes. 70 strength. You knock this poor girl Ooh. straight off her feet. So the, the poor uh, the poor maid goes barreling to the floor, promptly landing in a splash as you're then faced with the stairs in front of you that go uh, that go up. Can so you're enough. then fight you're running, fighting against the against the torrent of water coming down from uh, from above. Oh but, great. So there's water actually I'm pushing through a portal of water. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that'll save my ass from the fire vampires. You're oh my running, god, thank you. To the one area where they're not going to follow because they're not that. How bad. did I live? <laughs> and then I just get shot. <laughs> well, yeah, now there's one person left with a functioning gun down there. Oh, Jesus. So, round to the top, uh, round to the top of the next round as you barreled on through. I'm diving they, for cover then. Yeah, yeah. They will go on decks with the plus 50. They go on 120, which is 70 plus 50. Yeah, I'm diving for cover. <laughs> Okay, give me a uh, give me your dodge roll. I might get got. I don't know. Forty four uh, out of fifty five. Okay, so, so I do you... get give them the penalty die. Yeah, you you lunge forward and to one side. But yeah, that will give them a lovely penalty. Come on. Uh, I forty six would have been a hit, but I have to go with seventy six, which is a fire and a miss. Yes. So, so blam. There you go. Uh, that's another shot that goes wild. This is insane. <laughs> that that does sacrifice your action, though, I believe, for yeah. diving for cover. Yeah. So you've landed feet uh, feet first. The best I'll say is you're able to get on your feet. You're about halfway up the staircase, fighting yeah. against this torrent of water coming down. Uh, behind you, there are the two fire vampires lingering in the doorway at the top of the doorway because they're not going forward into that spray. And there are going to be sounds of the other. Um, staff coming from behind you coming to try and get into that doorway but again they're now rushing against a torrent of water I'm, I'm going to give one of them can potentially get the shot off at you ah this is where your luck might have run out uh, uh, I got a four which is under my impact I get impaled or was that um does the diving for cover also cover this as well? Oh, no, good point. That right. is, you do get a penalty die for that as well. So, pray that I don't roll another zero. Ah, I, I did roll another zero. Oh, okay. My <laughs> luck's ran out. That's it. Well, right. Uh, well, again, I might roll pretty, because it's only a D8, I might roll pretty quick. No, I'm dead. It impales and, uh, impales and pale. Uh, yeah, that's 14. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucked. <laughs> oh, Blam. Um, Davidge and Melvin, you hear a barrage of well, they, you hear the pum, 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 pum sound of gunfire from downstairs. And then yeah, I don't every... I don't think they're alive. I've just <laughs> turned the cannon right to where I think the door to the basement is. Mm -hmm. right. um, Fill you it are up. aiming you're aiming round a corner effectively. So I'm going to put a penalty die on your uh, your action down here. Okay. Uh, Melvin, do you want to do the same with the other cannon, or are you le uh, leaving it to one of the other firemen to do this? Uh, no, I, I, I'm trying to douse the great big Christmas cracker they've set up. I want to make that... I want to break it apart with the cannon as much as possible and make all the components as wet as possible. You're scattering it as far and wide as you can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that will be focusing one uh, hose entirely on that. So then that's going to be scattered all over the inside of the of that part of the warehouse. Uh, Davidge, if you give me a firearms rifle shotgun roll, I'm going to put a penalty die on it because you're trying to effectively aim round a corner. You know roughly where it is, but you've got no direct line of uh, line of sight on it. Um, okay. 
you'll still be able to get some water going down there because there's already that torrent that helped out flooding the floor yeah yeah Yeah. but if you get a success you're going to have a full torrent a full directly full beam uh full hose of water going down there okay and i'm i'm sorry i'm rolling firearms rifle shotgun with a penalty die rifle shotgun i got a 25 let's see how i do with a penalty die uh 90 now i've already failed okay so water is going to be going down there but it's not enough to prevent them from coming up the stairs okay Uh, a few rounds later after the gunfire stops you see a few a few people come at least a few figures coming into view they're not edgar or john uh, they seem to be wearing uh, regular clothes, regular clothing of like, house staff. Although you can see they have holsters for weaponry, uh, they're going to take up position, uh, trying to take pot shots at you. Okay, when I'll immediately around, shoot the right at them. Okay, so this this is a shoot off. They've they brought uh, handguns to a fight, and you brought a high um, a high pressure water hose to a fight. Water cannon, yeah. Right. Um, which also makes the floor slippery, hopefully. It does. Yeah. So that there's going to be disadvantages on both sides. Uh stat block. Because uh, so you're both using weight ranged weaponry, I'm going to cancel out the bonus that you would get for having a ready weapon because it makes sense. You both get plus fifty, it puts you on a net same difference. Uh what is your dex? My dex is 55. They're on 65. So I'm going to get to fire, but with a penalty dice because of range, because they're only using handguns and you are quite a way away. If they're using a rifle... Plus they're getting water in their face as the water's raining down on them. I kind of... Well, one of them kind of points at you and then is kind of looking at this gun and shaking it and wondering, why the hell is it jammed again? And at that point, you can give me a firearms rifle shotgun to see if you douse them with the hose. Uh, got a 61. I'm getting them wet, but I'm not hitting them with the. You're not hitting the full brunt of it. That's the main thing. Because if they took it a full brunt to that thing to the face, that would be a fair amount of damage that they would physically take. We just put right. almost the brunt, blunt force trauma of that amount of water hitting them. Keeper, uh, is this uh, is our is the fire barge so long that I'm not aware of them taking pot shots at him, or does that sort of ring out over the general cacophony? You would you would hear it. Yeah, I think that I'm going to turn my cannon toward the immediate threat. Okay, Especially if I see any red hair. Gotcha. Firearms, rifle, shotgun, please. I have a 45 and I rolled a 59 for God's sakes. But I have uh, luck or push. Can't push in combat. Oh, so. luck, right. Yeah, yeah. Luck is only available. Um, yeah, I want to. I want to clean the decks. Okay, David, you're suddenly worried by the comment about red hair as he uh, on the guard, yeah. uh, guards his uh, facial features. But yeah, if you want to spend the luck to hit, then you certainly can. Um, it won't be as effective against people as it would have been against uh, like a fire vampire, but I would say it's still going to do a, D, uh, a D10. Right. Uh, seven? That's lovely. Okay. Seven uh, plus slippery, yeah. Yeah, that's a con roll. Oh, one of them goes down, and there's a. You maybe even hear the crack of the, uh, maybe the skull as they go down. There's a very definite thud, and they just don't move, as so they get washed, maybe washed back into the pile of uh, now scattered bonfire that you have up there. That's gratifying. Right. I uh, next round, I think you're going to get to see a, a woman in red hair. She pops her pops her head out to uh, suddenly go absolutely ballistic as she realizes that her bonfire has been completely soddened, <clears throat> and above the ra- above the raging uh, the roaring water, you maybe don't hear what she calls, but she definitely looks like she yells something back over her shoulder, and two sparks fly up in an arc 
out from above and start to just uh, start to pair off, split left and right, and then start to dive down towards the boat. Yes, and this is a sense a self defense sort of spiral. Yeah, they they, they are say. not yeah they're not being crazy enough to go to, uh, to go straight into the path of the path of the, the jets of water, but. This does give you a chance to try and use the hoses to try and put out the fire vampires before they get to you. You have two disadvantage dice, though, uh, two penalty die, because they move very quickly and they are very small. Uh, mechanically, they are size one out of 100. Yeah. They have flying move of 11. So, yeah, you are at two penalty die on firearms, rifle, shotgun to try and hit them. Uh... Is there a way we can make the water spray? You know, like uh, instead of a, a stream, a, a spray? Uh, this is a, a, being a fire fairly high power hose, it's already got a degree of area of effect anyway. Okay. And all you need to do is get a success. I'm not going to have you roll 3d10 damage against something that's got three hit points. <laughs> well, we have good, have, are we, we just need to get one failure, right? And then we're, Failed. Yeah, because it's a penalty die, so it's yeah, you go I'm, over. Yeah, I failed. My first roll was eighty-seven, so we are right. right they uh, so well. Yep, yeah, they descend onto both ends of the ship. So we've got one each coming, one coming at each of you. So, uh, would you like to try and dodge or fight back? Well, the closer they are, the wet this as wet as this thing is. I mean, they have to get out. They have to get to my body, and I've got this giant right. nozzle. I'm going to They're moving very to fast. Fight back, yeah, fast. Okay, I'm going to are... try and go. I was just going to say I'm going to try to turn very quickly towards where the spark is, uh, and douse it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would give you because Smith, they still do move quick, but they are still small. But this is an area, an area, effectively an area effect weapon when you're right up close and personal with it. Uh, I will give you your choice of firearms, rifle, shotgun, or fighting brawl with a bonus die to try and hit it. The bonus die it's will this... cancel out you know, will cancel out the fact it's, it's such a uh, small target. It's the same either way. Okay. So, uh, my fighting brawl versus, uh, well, my fighting roll versus your brawl. My my dice went off the table. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have only. Oof. I got 25, which is exactly a hard, I mean, a regular. So, do you want to make it hard? Because at the minute, I'm on a regular success. Not with two luck. I've only got two luck. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's gonna be a hit then. How about Melvin? Can I do a? Can I push it? Not in combat. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll do, I'll... I have a regular success only, also, but I don't. I have not spent all my luck yet, so well, I will. Regular, because you need to fight back. You need to get a better degree of success. 94 what? is a fail from me, so your regular is one degree of success better. Oh. You 3d10 base for doing uh, for this kind of uh, degree of water against one, one, a fire vampire target. You obliterate the fire vampire that comes at you. It just immediately blinks out of existence as a spray, a waff of spray hits it. But the one on Davidge, it does hit Davidge. Uh, because you are admittedly by such a water i'm going to give you a certain amount of armor a bit like what uh what we have with agar because you, you are completely not completely drenched in water right. but it will help so 2d6 plus burn i probably also might fall into the thames mm -hmm. um I'm going to eliminate the burn part of this because once you are completely drenched i'm going to say you know, you're, you're not going to go on fire and yeah, my dice are not doing so well on damage. Five total. For, okay, that's for, five for out of five out of nine. So that is definitely a little bit more than half. Give me a con roll. Con. Double O four. You ride through this. You are, you have got skin of steel. It seems. 
I think being hit by the thing, though, I might purposefully dive into the Thames. I'm not going to have you roll to dive to hit the Thames. It's too bloody big. You can't miss it. So if you just want to dive overboard, then you can. I I hit the dock. (laughs) (laughs) There there is a sploosh, and you are now in the the filthiest river in the country. Oh, I didn't know that part. My clothes. <laughs> it's just, it's almost like a running gag for each episode. You're just having a new wardrobe every. Uh, every I know. <laughs> I think he'd be more worried about the sewage and the open burn wounds, but for later. Yeah, that's, is, that's a tomorrow problem. Is the witch still yelling on the dock? Uh, you can see she is still there. Now you've got a choice because the fire vampire that went on Davidge has only got one other target now. Right. But so it's it's going to turn its attention on you. And since or he went in the fireman. drink, I don't have to worry about knocking him off, which was a concern. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, you know, straight down along the uh, fireboat from one end to the other. Okay. Any, I will any give you chance the one of the other firemen could just stomp on the fire vampire. Well, more, more likely they stomp on it and they probably go up in flames Oof. as well. Yeah. Right, now this will give you plus 50 to your decks for having the uh, redded range weapon that you can use against it. Uh, I've got that your dex is 60, is that right? Uh, no, hang I've on. got 52. 50, I think that was an 52. age penalty. That's it. So that puts you on 102, which beats the fire vampire's dex, so you get to act before it does. You've still got the two penalty die for it being small and for it being so fast moving. So roll firearms, rifle, shotgun. Uh, actually, I'll say I'll cancel out one of those penalty die because it's so up close and personal. So just one penalty die on rifle, shotgun. The first was beautiful. And the second is 70. Blast. So you spray, but doesn't hit? Uh, yeah, I don't have enough luck to spend down from 70. So 77. Okay, it's going to try... And uh, come at you and try and burn you. Again, yeah. you have a certain degree that the burn damage, if it does hit, we're going to cancel out because your clothes I'm just a, a kind of sob yeah. at this point. Uh, you can try to use the uh, the ambient spray from the uh, gun as a fight back maneuver, should you wish, which you can use your choice of firearms, rifle, shotgun, or brawl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, essentially, I would have fallen on my ass and just make myself as small as possible and spiral it out. But it's not like yeah. I can put my hand over it to make it a general spray because I would just blast my hand off. So yeah, I you just probably go... would. You do more damage to yourself at that point. Uh, all right. So this is the uh, uh, firearms response. Uh, oh, 55. I need 45. I'll spend 10 if it'll help. You'll need to spend more than that. I rolled 31, which is under my hard. Uh, my hard is 22, 55. Wait, if, you're, if you're fighting back, you need to get better than hard, so you need to get an extreme. Right. Can I get down from 55 to 9? I ha- Is 50... is 46. 46, which is exactly what I have. Can I spend to zero? Yep, you can. That's 100% of my luck. (laughs) Then you are, as the the phrase goes, shit out of luck. But you do manage to turn uh, turn this round directly into the path of this burning ball of flame right in front of your face, and you obliterate it. There's just this... And then just this little trail of steam where this thing once was. There was a husk or something I could stomp on. <laughs> well, uh, all right. So I'm get stuff to stomp. There is a lady, lady with red hair that's now very, yeah. very angry um, on the dock. Yeah, and I'm going to call the other fire barge master. Actually, the pilot can try to help Davidge out of the water, but quick, though, that woman I'm climbing up. She now. has the she has the detonation code. She's a German spy. She's a German spy. <laughs> okay, um, 
you you can have a go with one hose, and then we'll have other firemen having a go on the hose with Davidge while the other uh, while the other uh, fireman is trying to get him out of the water. So roll twice, uh, once with your firearms rifle shotgun skill, and once with the uh, the firemen's. They're going to have a skill of forty. Well, mine was lousy, and he got a forty. Oh, you got dead on. Roll three d ninety four. Three, two, uh, five total. Okay, that's still a potent hit, or at least a good old hit for her. So she gets knocked on her backside, but it's not enough to do... It's not half of her hit points, because she has 11 total. And I want to shut her up. So you've done with the, uh, the one that took her chunk out of her ear, and those five, she is on five hit points left. Mm. <laughs> Uh, there is going to be a barrage of, well, barrage, at least a volley of gunfire coming from the other servants, which are now up above. Although two of them, thanks to either trying to attack you earlier and the other one trying to attack Edgar, have got jammed guns and they're not proficient enough to be able to try and unjam them while they are currently being sprayed with water and God knows what else. So I'm going to put penalty on them for range again. Uh, there is lots of bullets whooshing by the air around you. None of them can even remotely getting near to you. Only they do not know how to shoot these things. If they were flare guns, maybe they might have a better better time of it. But <clears throat> nope, nothing is uh, nothing is happening from them. Uh, David, you can be out of the water. Uh, this Deus time. ex machina. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the, the most vile of spells. Um, Are you going to try and hit with the hose again? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll grab the other hose quickly. And, and this time I'm going to get down on the knee and brace myself so that I can aim better. Okay. Uh, 37 is a regular only. 17. What? What is it? Oh, my... Bra uh, Rifle uh, or shotgun, if it's better. Just regular, just regular. Oh, regular's regular's fine. It's still a, a it's still in a range attack roll. Give me three d ten each. Oh, now we've got a nine. Oh, 13 just for me. Six. Eleven. All right. You between this, I'm going to say this because this is an area effect. You are pummeling all the members of staff with this very intense beam of water. You see the spray ends up going everywhere, but after a minute when you realise nothing's moving down there, you've maybe turned the beam uh, beam of jet of water away, and you just have this, this scattered pile of bodies laying there. <laughs> and everything is rather still. At which point you've got a couple of very uh, very tentatively uh, called nervous firemen coming up, got tapping on the shoulder and going, did, did we get them? Is, is it over? You have it a gaff. Uh, I asked they have fire have axes gaff. still. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have fire axes. I think I have to run up there to make sure that they're not still alive because they have guns uh, how ungrave of you yeah <laughs> he learned from the best well, what can you say good job you did go over to check filthy. them because all, <laughs> yeah, all you've done is basically knock them on their ass they are right they are still there they're not dead but they are kind of battered and bruised of which you do also have say a very red-headed uh woman with this remarkably stellar just stone-like skin face looking up at you with this degree of just burning hatred on her face. Can I uh, chop her do? head off? There is a resounding thunk as her head is taken from her body, and you can definitely give me a sand check for cold-blooded murder there. Yeah, I, I don't pass my sand check, but... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to... Oh, I don't have any luck at all. It's gonna be a zero. I was going to roll luck to see if I was busy comforting the boatman and didn't realize what had happened, but I'm afraid there's no way out of that. So what what yeah. sanity do I take? 
he, you knew that she was a threat. You know that there was definitely you are justified in doing so. But just even the act itself still has a bit of a hit. Uh, instead of the normal D six for murder, I'll put it down to a D three. Okay. And for witnessing and failing, oh, I actually, I succeeded. Oh, if you succeeded, zero. I take three. So you, you you can take ten points of revulsion damage, but otherwise your sanity remains intact. And I am screaming mm -hmm. because I've had it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, damage. Um, I'll leave you here to break up the bomb components, and I'll help the boatman continue to fight the fires as long as I can stay up. If that's amenable. I I I don't know if I'm in my right mind at the moment. So, uh, do I need to kill all of these servants, or I mean, you she's can if dead. you want. Uh, they they aren't. None of them are dead from what you've done, but they're kind of on the border of being incapacitated. If you want to make sure, because you know a whole load of them have had uh, back, basically backed up on spells that they were taught by Aurora, if you want to make absolutely certain you're going to go around and kill every last one of them. Yeah, I the think... the thing to do. If I can grab a gun from one of them, then I'm going to stand over each one and put a bullet in them like as if I was in the military and I just had to do it. And I'll probably case, need a long respite at the sanitarium. <laughs> there's uh, there's another few pops with uh, guns. And yeah, after then there is just this growing pool of red all around you that mixes with the water from the hoses. And there's only you and the fireman and, da and Melvin that's left alive. We got to get the hell out of there because the city's on fire. I think we can uh, move forward a little bit in time now as a uh, as a wrap up. So, as was mentioned, the fact that this uh, lovely evening went down in infamy in history has been the first night of the Blitz. This is a night that Londoners around that time just do not forget. This is pun not intended, burned into their consciousness that. This began the a wave of what would be 57 consecutive nights of intense bombing and is just a period of complete and utter horror for all involved. But as as the saying goes, it's keep calm and carry on. There is the, uh, the wartime spirit that g grows and prevails where people just become so obstinate, they kind of settle into a routine eventually where they they just... Oh, the, the air age signs have started again. Right, time to get down to the bomb shelter for, again for the evening. They even have past sometime parties down on the uh, the lower deep uh, the deep shelters on the underground. But that's for a little way in the future because there might be some other other things happening between now and the end of the the end of the blitz. But a couple of nights later, uh, you receive summons to go to. Uh, this is before the um, before the blackout, so before the siren start for the evening. Um, you are requested to attend a certain bookstore, or at least the office above a bookstore, just off Trafalgar Square, where N and Fotheringay uh, meet you. They ask what happened with uh, your associates, uh, John and Edgar. Uh, you do have your other associate there, uh, Dr. Gross, who is... Uh, he's not in the meeting, but they do say that he's currently been... Uh, Let's say looked after by some folks trying to put his head back together. He was in a bit of a state yeah. uh, when you last left him. I need to look at your men, your men too, who can help me put my head back together. Yeah, we can um, we can provide some to provide some services there. But the main reason why I wanted to uh, to call you is that you've to mainly thank you that you've done a, a spectacular job dealing with this problem. That, as you're aware, Aurora would have. Or Miss Williams would have potentially caused a very significant threat to the, well, to the the city, maybe even to the rest of, maybe even to the rest of the world. But we have a number of problems like this 
that we've dealt with in the past, and I doubt this is going to be the last of them. We have a number of people that work under myself and report directly to me that are working to combat these threats both at home and abroad. Obviously, abroad is going to be for a very different branch of a branch of folks. We're not going to ask you to suddenly jump on a plane and go commando in uh, enemy territory. But if you're if you're up for it and want to potentially stand on the line, literally draw a line in the sand against these things on the home front, then we'd like to offer you, say, membership and resources within our auxiliary network here. Can we say? think about it? Oh, there's, there's no immediate uh, need to say yes or no, but the uh, sooner the better would be appreciated. Let me think about it. I need to relocate. I need to see if there's anything left of my estate. Mm -hmm. I need to look into Leland's estate, too. That's right next door. Oh, that's kind of dreases, but yes. Well, you know, um, my uh, career has been somewhat impacted by recent events. Um not sure what the advancement was like at Dunbar and Associates anyway. Well, I think I could be persuaded to be of further service. I didn't think there was any threat greater than the Bosch, and apparently I was mistaken. Oh, like I say, they pale in, in, into insignificance compared to some of the stuff that's out there. Hard to imagine. And uh, war has a very an unlikable habit of bringing all this stuff to the surface. Mm. Well, breaches and the normal function of life. Hmm. Yeah, it does stir things up a bit. But yeah, if you're willing to willing to join us, we can give you a bit of a bit of a briefing on some of the things that you might uh, encounter out there, and hopefully be ready, ready in case something comes along next time. Well, I may be willing. I just need to think about it for mm -hmm. a day like or I said, two. no. Yeah, like I said, don't. Uh, there is a war on after all. Don't uh, don't take too long. But I'd be very appreciative if you said yes. And on that note, we'll leave it uh, dangling for a bit. But that brings us to an end to midnight sunrise. There we go. Wow. Well done. Right. Well, only two out of uh, two out of four, or two out of five, technically, with uh, Doctor Gross uh, parting the ways there. Um, I don't know whether we want to leave it a bit before we jump into the uh, the next scenario, or work out uh, what we're going to do with characters going forward. But that's uh, that's to say a good point to leave it for the minute. We'll we'll talk about that afterwards, and I'm sure there's nothing in this you want to reveal to us yet. So. <laughs> oh, but there's, there's still stuff out there, so... Oh, yeah. All right, let's call it. Uh, our players included Max Meltzer, Josh Harwood, who will be back, uh, Alex Sun, David Gasway, and myself with Matthew Sanderson as the Keeper of Arcane Lore. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you would like to join them, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description, or you can use Super Thanks by hitting the button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows, and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. Good gaming.